and we're recording all right welcome to the clear shots podcast everybody uh my name is seth the executioner skinner mine is jake cooking god jones and oh by the way kyle you need a nickname so (laughs) (laughs) i didn't prepare a nickname but uh my name's kyle perez all right fair enough we'll take it oh shit <laughs> yeah uh yeah oh shit i'm playing so, I, uh, I, i'm playing burnout paradise i'm sorry okay <laughs> you're always playing something <laughs> sorry I, I, I got a new house i'm in a new house True. kyle helped me move in yes my tv my i'm in my you can't see you got yeah, it looks great background. it looks but, great <laughs> um i i have my couch completely parallel to the tv and when i left for work today i was like i have like a hundred something gigs on my xbox and i while i was at work i was like scrolling through and i was like i'll download that i'll download that and then they were all here and yes yeah, so i'm playing burnout paradise but welcome to the show kyle thanks man i appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah so you played Triple A. Did you play in Triple A? Uh, I played in the independent leagues. Um, okay. So I saw that you uh, played for um, the the team in Roswell. Yep. Yep. I was with the Invaders. Uh, I spent two seasons there, and I kind of moved around in between. Um, I was talking to an Angel Scout for a little while, and I played in a, a team in Kansas as well. And up and down leagues. Um, the way that works is uh, the independent leagues are not affiliated with Major League Baseball, but it's kind of like a feeder system and they kind of you know a lot of teams will hide players um there do they go to like uh mexican leagues or something like that they can yeah we had a teammate that ended up going to the mexican league and played with uh the real arrow say i was caliente um which is that is equivalent to triple a they're on you know the minor league website and um so you mm-hmm. can there's a lot of places you can go and yeah so i mean what were you like a relief pitcher a starting pitcher yep yep so i uh I was a starter back in the day. Um, You know, I went to college over time, and my freshman year, I didn't pitch a single inning. Uh, Came back out my sophomore year, didn't pitch a single inning. I faced one batter in a game we were down by 13 and uh, (laughs) decided to drop down to submarine. So I threw from almost my ankle. Um, From there, I progressed and ended up becoming a reliever, a short reliever. And senior year of college, I uh, put myself second all time in games pitched in a season uh, and then signed with uh, Roswell from there. And that's, you know, there's a backstory to that as well, but I'll let you guys, you know, go as needed. No shit. Yeah. So how hard is it? So you said you pitched submarine. You didn't pitch like that normally? Nope. Nope. I was over the top for uh, about 19 and a half years of my life. And then. So you got to restructure your entire uh, mechanics though. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Did, so did, I, did, you, did you do that on your own? Sorry to cut you off. Or did you have a coach for that or? Well, so I, I get to college and, you know, I'm struggling and I'm talking to one of our more successful pitchers and he threw, he's kind of a three quarters arm slot guy for any of my baseball fans, you know, Chris Sale, um, pretty similar from there from the left side. And he threw a slider from there and he taught it to me and the arm slot was from about my hip. And, you know, from there we're like, okay, well, you can't throw one pitch from your hip and everything else over the top because anytime it come from your hip, comes from your hip, they're going to know what's coming. They know what it is. Yeah. So... You know, we're like, hey, you haven't pitched at all. You haven't done anything worth a damn in college yet. Let's uh, let's see if we can get a couple other pitches from there. So I started working. That's where a kind of a coach came in. Um, a guy I ended up running a baseball academy with. I was his first ever client. So him and I worked pretty diligently throughout the off season and said, let's get this, you know, rolling. And we we were not experts in uh, in that aspect of the game by any means. And we kind of just, you know, <laughs> went with it as as problems yeah. arose. And- well, do, do you change up what your your pitches are, like your go-to pitches? Like, would you be like, a, like, oh, well, since I'm throwing submarine, I'm going to start throwing, like, some sinkers or mixing, you know, like yeah. this slider on the outside kind of thing? Yeah, absolutely. You know, your throwing progression changes depending yeah. on kind of your pitching style. And once I drop down, um, it, I call it a sinker as well, but really it's just a fastball and from that arm slot, this rotation of the ball pulls it into a sinker's movement. But that's that was yeah. my go-to. It was my bread and butter. And then I threw a slider from there. And um, how I would attack hitters, you know, a lot of it is is studying the hitters prior to the game. 
Um, but either way, you know, my go-to progressions were pretty consistent and that did definitely change from going over the top to down low. Yeah. I know there's a lot of pitchers that'll call certain pitches like, like a screwball or whatever, but it's not really like that. Like it's kind of just the way they deliver the ball or the way it moves, just that general action of it. You know, you yep. get really, a lot of times certain pitches are just two seam fastballs, but they call them something different. Cause yeah, they, you know, they want to spice it's, it up a little bit. Well, I mean, you know, I, I, when I first started dropping down, I had other pitches I could kind of show. I threw a changeup and a slider, but at the end of the day, the only pitch that I could even throw really for a strike consistently was a, the fastball sinker kind of thing. So, you know, you don't need to throw everything you have at all times, um, changing speeds to the plate. So I might stand there, come set and sit there for four seconds and then pitch. And then the next time I might come set and go right away, you yeah. know, um, I might throw one as hard as I can and still wasn't very hard. And I may very well try to lob one in there, you know, so just keeping people off balance is, is half the battle. So that's, yeah, just, I rely just on that. Case. Well, I know that like, you know, that a lot of people say like a lot of baseball analysts will say like, you can get through just with a fastball and a changeup if yeah. you're good enough at commanding it and, yeah. you know, understanding how to keep them off balance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, location is huge and you see it a lot yeah. of times in major league baseball, you know, Greg Maddox through 89 and mm -hmm. he had uh, one of the best baseball careers ever. And then even Aroldis Chapman does a great job. But if you look at his blown saves the last five years, you can hit 106 if it's right down the middle, you know? Dude, and it's unbelievable that, like, you, when guys, when I see guys that are throwing 100 miles an hour with command and they're putting it, you know, they're like just, they're hitting the corner, they're painting the corners. And yeah. it's like, how do you have that kind of command at that? velocity and i think it's just got to be years of developing your mechanic i think mechanics are probably the most important thing i would imagine just like in anything though like bowling golf you know yep. just like anything that's repetition you know once you get used to doing that i think you just kind of get in a zone and you understand where you can put the ball well mechanics and consistency are huge man because i mean like you said think about anything you do you know and if you go through a pitcher's wind up or you go through anything you know there are so many moving parts of your body and different muscles and um, you know, different angles that need to be taken that if they're off by a tiny bit, you know, if we're pitching, for example, uh, you kind of close your front side. So this is my glove side. You close through. If you close it too loosely, you're ripping your whole side open. So now you pitch that was planning to go down the middle is now missing up and in. Or if you are too tight, maybe you're going to spike it down, you know, so your, your yeah. release point is completely affected by everything you do up until that point. And being off by a tiny bit is going to change the entire pitch. You know, so consistency and repetition is huge in mechanics. You know, that's the more you practice those, the more consistent you're going to become. So, yeah, I always wonder how much uh, like scouting goes into that, too. Like in minor leagues, when you see a batter come up, how well are they scouted? Like, do you know, like, do you go, oh, well, this guy tends to swing at outside pitches pretty often or this guy likes it up high? Like, yeah. How, how, how much of the scouting do you really get? So it's uh the game has changed a lot, and if you guys have seen Moneyball, I feel like that is a uh, you know really a a true picture of the first time that analytics became a thing in baseball. Yeah. Um, but you know you walk into a college dugout and you're looking at an entire wall on the dugout of just charts of every hitter, every pitcher, you know. So we can look and say, hey, you know, Seth Skinner, uh, we played him ten times already. Here's every pitch that was thrown and the location of his last thirty at bats against us. And I smoked every one of them. Every one of them went over the fence. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's Moneyball? I <laughs> that movie with Brad Pitt and uh, uh, who else was in it? Jonah Hill or something like that? It's a good question. I don't even know. I can't remember all the uh, actors. I believe involved. it was Brad Pitt, yeah. Is that the one well, where, the, uh, where, they, guys, where they start well, like, the, the women's league? No, it was the Oakland Athletics. Uh, I don't remember. They were. I don't remember. It was all like a uh, like nego It was all about contracts and yeah, all that negotiation. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm just trying to see. Chris Pratt, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Keith Middlebrook. It's. It really talks about the A's how they kind of transformed what baseball was, you know, at the time. And these these guys were huge on analytics. They took a chance on what ended up being, you know kind of the guy who paved the way for submariners like myself, his name is Chad Bradford. Um, so he was a, a big spotlight in that, in that movie. And, um, but yeah, it just talks about how kind of they evolved baseball, you know, into what it's become as opposed to, 
you show up blind and just try to outplay your opponent. Now there's a lot of strategic uh, things behind it. Not necessarily strategic like the Houston Astros, but strategic in other aspects. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they never, before that happened, teams were never really studying their opponents that much. You were kind of just winging it the whole time. Yeah, yeah, correct. They kind oh, of don't up well in the, in the scouting aspect, too, if they did the same thing. You know, you don't just watch a guy and say, oh, he's got it. You know, they were taking different stats, different tendencies into account, and they picked a team that, you know, maybe otherwise might not have been your best available based on what you can see. But based on their tendencies, you know, your all kinds of things, your uh, OVP or your, you know, whatever it may be, um, you know, you're on base percentage, you're betting average plus slugging, whatever it might be. And they look at yeah. all these that are completely complex and pick their team from that. They took sort of like a Bill Belichick approach to building a team where instead of getting a team of guys that are really good, you took a bunch of guys that were pretty good at a couple of things. And fit the mold, yeah. And then you build, yeah. like, you, you get the guys together and build the team around the guys rather than build the guys around the team. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which is, I mean, that's really the way to do it. Get the guys, you know, yeah. you know where their strong suits are, you know, and you know what they can do. It's crazy because it sounds, it sounds like so duh to do like, to do that. But you don't really, you see a lot of teams will, in all sports, you know, you could look at, uh, you know, the, the in NBA, NHL, MLB, or NFL teams will be like oh we're like the fucking uh who always gets tons of guys in free agency like the raiders or like the dolphins or the jags they always like sign all these huge dudes and then they don't do anything with them right. and then you get you get teams like the packers that are always consistently good because they keep the same guys um, well what they do is they draft young kids and you know a lot of times with the packers they don't want to let them they don't want to pay the guy after their sh- that short-term contracts up so they just right. let them go, and they try and find somebody else to fit that mold. But like with guys that are, you know, with teams that are picking up free agents, they pick that one guy, and they go, "Oh, he's played really well the last couple of years." And then they go, "This guy's going to be the guy that turns the team around." And they think that for some reason, this one guy is going to be the dude that changes everything. And that's not, especially in football, that ain't really how it works. See, it's it's a fine line, and that also varies per sport as well. You know, so in basketball, and this is something that. If you guys remember the Sixers back in the day when they didn't do anything at all, they went 10 and 72 one year. Their, yeah. their owner's approach and GM is pick the most athletic person, not necessarily the best shooter, not the best rebounder. Who is the best athlete coming through this class? So we're talking biggest, fastest, strongest, not always the best basketball player. And they say, we can teach you how to shoot. We can teach you how to dribble. We can't teach you how to jump seven feet. And we can't teach you how to be seven, one and have a 40 inch vertical. Yeah, they did that like when the when the process first started. They did that with uh, Jaleel Okafor, Nerlens Noel, and Carter Williams. They just got these guys that were freak athletes that had like no fundamentals, and then were shocked when they couldn't like. Well, in that in that same stretch, they also t- had like the number one pick or you know a top three pick for three years in a row, and they took three centers with that top pick. Yeah, only need maybe two of them, not all three. And but they said, hey, you know, we're going to we're picking the best available athlete. I don't care if it's seven yeah. in a row or if it's, you know, two point guards, two centers and two forwards. Right. Um, and everyone was like, I can't believe this. And now they're a powerhouse. And a lot of those guys panned out because they were good athletes, you know, and the yeah. ones that they were able to still offload early. You know, basically, you had a year or two to prove your worth and then you're gone while you still have some value. Um, but I mean, they're they're a powerhouse at this point before the season was suspended. But yeah, there, well, that's the thing. Team. In basketball, though, you can have a guy that comes in and does change the dynamic of the team. Mm-hmm. Like a single guy can change that dynamic. It's Whereas like, in a yeah. lot of other team sports, it just can't. You can't do it that easily. Yeah, I mean, if you like, you like, uh, you know, I just said that if you look at a basketball team, you have five guys on the floor, and maybe you have seven guys that are really real contributors to your your lineup. But you have five guys on the floor. If you can go ahead and pick up another starter, whether it's through free agency, trade, or draft. That's 20% of your team has now improved by, right. by upgrading. Where if you look at a football team, you know, you've got 30 guys that are contributors, significant contributors to your, your every game. And so to, to match that equivalent uh, number, what is it, maybe six? You need six uh, guys to have that similar yeah, impact? You need, to, you need to replace six players every year in NFL in order to do the same amount of improvement 
as the NBA. Yes. And um, I would say that not only in, I guess the NBA is like the biggest one where you think of one guy changing the course of a team. Cause you don't really see that. You definitely don't see that much in football unless it's like a quarterback or a defensive end. But even then it's like very, you know, not as much as like a LeBron or like a, well, Kevin even with it, even with a defensive end, like you could get, you could just game plan to block that guy, you know, and shut him down. Yeah. Like there's ways to do that. With yeah. a quarterback, it's he's got the ball in his hands all the time, so he's going to be able to have chances to make plays. But we've right. all seen it as well, you know, the the great quarterback. And really, you know, with these NFL draft prospects, scouts aren't too off on a player. But you have to look at the system they're going into. You know, the, the Bengals just took uh, Burrow. Mm-hmm. I don't see it panning out. That is the worst offensive line and worst weapons around you in history, basically. You know, so as great of a quarterback he is, what are you going to do when you have half a second to get a ball out of your hands with a receiver who's not a top tier player and a running back, Joe Mixon? I mean, Joe Mixon's a great athlete, and the line he just got absolutely demolished this year. So it's like, who is their um, who's their second string receiver? Everyone raves about him. I cannot remember who it is. They they had AJ Green who was out all year. They've got uh, Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd. Yeah, so pe- people are thinking Tyler Boyd is going to take a step up, and hopefully A.J. Green isn't that bad. And Mixon, Mixon's pretty good, but I think he's a little injury prone. But that O-line, it was awful, but they're getting their first-round pick from last year back. But I think the offense will be fine. The defense is shot, though. The Bengals' defense is shot. Well, that's why I think you have to build, you know, in every as- every single sport, you know, you can't – reinvent the wheel overnight so for example like the Steelers I'm a Steelers fan they traded their first round pick this year which the Steelers are they're struggling in a lot of ways you know between Bell and Brown leaving Big Ben has been hurt every year for the last 20 years in a row um but they went out and traded for Minka Fitzpatrick but he perfectly yeah dude that that was such a huge move so it's like yeah getting rid of a first rounder sure maybe they could have gotten uh a great quarterback or a great something else but that quarterback's not recreating an offense that's pretty, pretty holy. You know, it's Swiss cheese for sure. And yeah, that's part of the thing, too, is like when you draft a guy, you got to make sure that they're going to fit with your scheme, your existing scheme, yep. and they're going to work well with your head coach because, you know, you get a lot of guys that are quarterback and, you know, they're going to butt heads with their head coach just because they want to run this. They want to have this much control over the huddle and, you know, you have to make sure that those sort of things meld too. So there's like on field and off the field conduct that you have to look at. So oh, yeah. scouts aren't just looking at their talent. They're looking at, you know, how they conduct themselves as a person as well. Right. That's uh, I mean, there's, there's so much more than skill that goes into any sort of sporting event. You guys know with any sort of team environment you've ever been a part of is you, if you don't get along with each other, I mean, quite honestly, you need to be able to, get along with the people you're playing with. I mean, it's, you're a family at that, you know, it's Mm -hmm. together. Everyone achieves more, you know, everyone's working towards a common goal. If you guys aren't meshing in every sort of aspect, whether it comes to your play style, your friendships, your relationships, whatever it may be, if you don't have the person next to you's best interest at heart, you're not going to be successful. And I've seen that's why you see certain guys not get signed by teams because they know that they're locker room cancer. You'd rather, and it's going to tear the whole team apart. Half as good, but twice as good of a fit, you know? Right. And so like my first year in Roswell, this group of guys, we still talk every single day, you know, years later, this was from 2016 to now. And we broke just about every single league record in hitting, but this was a team that, you know, you might catch us at the strip club together on a night where people who don't even go to strip clubs were still there to be a part of it, you know, and it was 30, 25 guys that we just got along, man. We, you know, we meshed and we weren't necessarily the most talented team, especially when it comes to your past experiences, your resume, your, you know, raw talent. How, we didn't throw the hardest. We didn't whatever. But it was, you know, a great experience when it came to the friendships created. And it was, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to give everything you have to win a game. And we ended up, you know, putting up like a league record in homers, RBIs, everything. And our pitching well, was- I mean, it's like you want to be you want to be around people that you enjoy being around and especially if it's your uh whether it's your job or if it's just something you enjoy doing anyway 
Yeah. So it it makes it better for everybody. You don't want to sit there and be around everybody that you fucking can't stand. Well, picture going to work. Yeah. If you hate everyone you work with, you're going to dread going to work. And when you're there, you're going to be less motivated to perform, you know, or to whatever it may be. To be quick if you're working the drive through or to have great customer service if you're working in retail or whatever it may be. I mean, think about the, the numerous jobs that are out and about and, you know, you're just less responsive to, to negative attitude and negative energy. So, yeah. I mean, it just, it only makes sense that you would want your, you want uh chemistry, locker room chemistry. Yep. <clears throat> oh, and, um, yeah, well, like I said, there's guys that could be, that are star players, but they're just not good in the locker room. They're yeah. just assholes. And Antonio. that's why they don't get signed. Antonio, Antonio. Brown. Oh. Yeah. But, I mean, he did get signed, but he played for – he went to New England, right? And then he played, like, the – Like, like a week. Game. Like four more allegations came out. And yeah. <laughs> then he said something about Robert Kraft, and then he wants – you know, he's he's uh he's the guy who like sends the drunk text to someone telling him to die and then takes it back the next morning and says I was drunk kind of thing, you know. Right. Yeah, he's a nightmare, <laughs> dude. Don't you don't want that guy. Stay away from him. Yeah, the Steelers were loaded with him. Even Le'Veon Bell's a cancer, and I bought a, a Le'Veon Bell color rush in December and uh the season ended shortly after and he never played another game for the Steelers. So I still yeah. wear it. It is what it yeah. is. I- my back against the wall so no one can see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're, yeah, they're, they're expensive just jerseys. It's a Willie Parker jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Parker was sick. Dude, I, I'll never forget, um, like, growing up, uh, the first football team that I really followed was the Steelers. I don't know if you – Sep knows Matt and Ryan Martin. I don't know if you do, Kyle, but they were – that you? whole family is. Uh, right, my age, Ryan Martin, he has an older brother. Yeah, 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 that one. Oh, Ryan. Yeah. So, like, they were Steelers fans. So they got me into the Steelers. So I was, like, obsessed with the Steelers from, like, 2003 to, like, 2005. And then I went to my first uh, actual NFL game. And my dad was like, if we're taking you to this game, you have to be a Cowboys fan. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but, like. <laughs> um, and that's how they get you, dude. That's, that's how they how keep they you in the cult. You, man. They- it's like uh, it's like those timeshare things. Like you yeah. get you take the tour of the timeshare to get free Disney tickets. I had to root for the Cowboys in a Steelers jersey. Or no, I was in an Eagles jersey. Sorry, I like the Steelers and the Eagles because it made my dad wicked mad because they were so much better than Dallas at the time. That's why I liked the. That's why I ended up liking the Packers because my dad didn't like the Packers. He was a Cowboys fan. Right. And the Packers would always beat him back. You know, back then. So well, I was just like, I'm I'm being a Packers fan immediately. I, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, uh, fucking love football. I don't know what I would do. Like that Le'Veon Bell situation. That'd be like if Zeke left oh, Dallas. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Or like the Antonio Brown, the Antonio Brown thing was so insane because it was like his whole, at least for like Steelers fans probably knew how kind of weird he was before that whole situation. I thought he was like the model player. Like he, Never did anything. Never got penalized, really. Then all of a sudden, it's like, you know, John Gruden is a racist. And then it's like, <laughs> I'm throwing I'm throwing cinder blocks at toddlers that live outside my building. To, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fondle my f- personal trainer. And it's like, this dude had, like, a, he had a career year. Like, this dude had, he had, like, a Peyton Hillis-esque year of scandals. Like, <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing, man. Here's like, it's a, I think that's, it's because of social media and how easy these things can get out now. So like, you know, back in the day you had athletes that were doing that shit like crazy guys that are in the, you know, hall of fame record books and shit. And oh, Charles Haley, Charles Haley was the biggest maniac in the world. Dude. It's like, there's, they were like a lot of them were just scumbags, you know, they're like yeah. hitting women and shit. <laughs> it's like, I mean, they don't hear about it cause there's no Twitter. <laughs> even if they can fly under the radar, the wheels fall off once one thing slips. But then you look at other things like, uh, Aaron judge, if you guys, you know, know a lot about him from the Yankees. And, um, I've, I've met him a few times. Luckily my roommate in college or in pro ball was his roommate in college. No way. But his new girlfriend. It's like a new fling. It's not the same girl that he was dating when I met him. Uh, got a DWI the other day, and that was all over the news before anyone could even blink. You know, so like before, 
it has nothing to do with him really. He didn't get behind the wheel. He wasn't even in that state, I don't think, at the time. And mm -hmm. just think about it. Boom. She gets a DWI, and next thing you know, police footage is released, and it's just media, man. And media is the hype of everything. It literally is the destruction of the world. As far well, as you I'm just concerned. have so much stuff now. Like you, you, the fact that everybody has a freaking camera in their pocket that they can just shoot a video with in an instant. You can press a button. Like your 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 open button on the side of your phone. Like I think if I double tap it or something, it just opens my camera. So I'm immediately filming the second I pull my phone out. So when shit goes down, you can get footage of it. And that's that's yeah. the George Floyd thing. That's how that even happened. We wouldn't have footage of that. I mean, there's body cam footage that came out, I believe. That wouldn't have gotten released otherwise, though. Right, exactly. This would have never even known it would even yeah. know about it, really. It makes you think, like, and this, this happened way back, you know, not way back, but a few years ago, a similar situation happened. And it was like, what aren't we seeing? You know what I mean? Like what? What? What were we, the th like the three of us as white guys that live in a small town of like twelve thousand people, like what aren't we seeing going on? Well, so the they 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 did make it mandatory to wear body cams. I'm pretty sure that that was recent though. That was yeah. recent, and that so. that is extremely necessary. But it, you know, also how recent are body cams in general? You know. But like, yeah. I think it's super necessary. You ha you should have to absolutely do that. And I think if an officer's tampering with a body cam or turning it off, that's a felony. I'm pretty positive. So they have to have it on. One hundred percent. And that's and that goes from all walks of life and all crime severities, man. It's just there's injustice top to bottom that can be caught otherwise, you know. And it's just things get grimy man. it absolutely does, you know, and you see all these lawsuits or whatever they may be get thrown out the window because there's no evidence. And I'm like, don't, don't tell me the body cam didn't catch it all, you know, yeah. it's missing, missing footage, you know, and you hear dash, stuff. Like, they have dash cams, they have body cams, it's like something. And even just the audio from those things that, that sometimes is enough, you know, and it, it serves a, a dual purpose. You know, it's a double edged sword because there could be a time where an accusation has arose where, body cam is going to completely resolve the situation you know if you did things the right way and a body cam caught it and you're being accused otherwise let's put an end to it go ahead and watch the camera you know yeah. so it's, it's a fine roll line. the tape you yep. know what i mean yep it doesn't lie yeah. that's for, it, the no, way it doesn't. Is i have the right lighting and i look a little skinnier and that's you know that's the thing is like eventually if they have the technology to be able to modify videos i mean they can do it in a lot of ways already you can already modify audio super easily. So if you can modify video, that's that's a scary world because now you can get blamed for some shit that you didn't do. Yeah. But I think this whole thing, like, realistically, my stance on the whole situation is, like, I get both sides super hard. And I understand why this is happening because we've had this. It's happened so many times. Nothing changes. And then people forget about it because news cycles are fast. And then you got Colin Kaepernick taking a knee and then he gets kicked out of the league. And it's like, now you see this happen and it's like a perfect storm where everybody's like already pissed off that they've been locked up for three months or whatever. They can't do shit. And then they're frustrated and now they're going to go out and protest. But then you also have these fringe clowns that are going to, destroy local businesses and shit that is kind of where i draw the line because yeah. you're going oh these guys have been out of work they haven't been able to open for three plus months and they're about to open back up soon and now you're just gonna and they're like oh i can't wait to open up my business is gonna we got to get this thing back you know going again and now you know they wake up one morning and the shit is burnt down because these people are protesting you yeah know? It's a fine line for me, you know, because I do think that like a peaceful protest hasn't worked. Obviously. Yes. As you can tell, we're still where we are. And honestly, it, it may not work anyways what's going on currently because there are a lot of just closed mind individuals. I've, I've seen it all. You know, what I've read on, read on Facebook from different people, I'm like, you, my friend, are an idiot. You know, that is the most ignorant thing I've ever read. And then next thing you know, I scroll down one comment and that's the most ignorant thing I've ever read. But it's... It is what it is. I just wish that it would be, you know, in a different light. Like, for example, 
instead of burning down the local business of someone who may have been from any different ethnicity or gender or religion and burning it down and ruining what they've built, go ahead and burn the Statue of Liberty down because that is supposed to represent, you know, everything that this country values. And maybe that's your protest, you know, burn. I'm not, you know, if, if rioting is going to happen, at least make it a pretty neutral site. Don't, don't ruin someone's whole life, you know, and don't say insurance is going to cover it because that's not the point, you know. Really you can probably be burning down someone who's rioting with you, who's burning with you, you know, right. and they don't have a loud enough voice to stop you guys from burning their whole life down. I really it's, enjoy it's, the, um, uh, the, there's this group of protesters going around down south that are uh, destroying all of the Confederate memorials. Uh, I was totally against that a, w a long time ago, but I have turned it around completely. Because um, we don't need them. <laughs> we don't need. We, we don't, don't need. need we don't. We don't need. The, no, we don't. We, we we don't need these statues of like people that were legitimately starting a civil war and fighting a civil war. Well, again, man, that's the thing. Is like that's proving a point. I get that, but you know, if one arises in Oswego, the one the other day in Oswego was very peaceful, and I love to see it. Oh, it, it was great for me. It got the message across just fine. You know, and maybe not nationally, and maybe that's not doing the job, but in Oswego, it did a great job. But don't go into the press box and burn the place down. Oh, Steve, yeah, for sure. Steve Canale is probably, I'm sure, either walking with you or praying for you. So that's not the place to go burn, and that's like burning it to burn. You know, there was local businesses in Syracuse, and, you know, it's it's a fine line. You know, I definitely think that it should be this severe because it really it has been swept under the rug every single time they try to do it the right way. You know, the country in general has tried to do it the right way. And, yeah. you know, this, it has to be raised hell, you know, but yeah, like, I, like I said, I agree with both sides in a way and you have to almost, cause you gotta be like, okay, they have to do something drastic to get this point across. And it's throughout history that's worked, you know, riots have worked. Yeah. And I still don't know if it's really going to change anything. No, because be it's there's those cops are still going to be there. They're still going to be racist cops. 100%. What, what do you do to what, the the real question is what do you do to change this? Like what is that? What can they put in place to change it? Honestly, the only possible fix, and you're never going to completely fix it because it's just you know you're, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree in a lot of instances. But it's our generation may never see the change. But it's it's all about the future change. And for, you know, for if us three, if we have children, or if you know, I don't know. If, either of you guys do currently. Jake, I know you don't, Seth, I don't know. But if you have children, you instill those values in them that you're going to be different and you're going to be a voice for the future. And that's it. I don't think we're ever going to see the change in our time or our lifetime. But what? how are we going to impact it over the next 80 years, you know, when our kids are coming through the system or our grandkids are coming through the system? And what values have you instilled in them to, to make a difference? And it will never completely go away because you're going to get the same guy who's posting racial slurs on Facebook right now about what's going on, who's going to tell his son or daughter that that's how they should believe. And it's just going to be a never ending chain. Yeah. You know, there's, to, there's always going to be bad people, which means there's always going to be bad cops. All you can do is minimize though. It's like anything, man. You know, you're, you give up a 10 0 scoring run in basketball, minimize, minimize, keep it at 10. You give up yeah. 20 runs in baseball. Let's hold them at 20 and not 21. If you have, you know, uh, 10 million people in the world that are racist, Okay. Hey, let's next line. Let's try to cut that number down to seven. That's how you just have to continue to, to minimize, man. It'll never be obsolete, but minimize, you know, yeah. and that's, that's my thought process. You know, it could be peaceful still. And it's all about what are we going to do about it? What are, is the person next to you going to do about it? How are they going to try to make an impact? If everyone does the right thing. You think it should work, you know? So, you know, I also think maybe there should be some accountability for the cops who are just standing there when this kind of shit is going on. And not stepping in and going, hey, what are you doing, man? He's already down kind of thing. You know, yeah. it's it's not – it's someone had to be the guy who steps up and does the right thing there. We live in a society, though, of, of people who are too scared to intervene, you know. It's – if you the, – the cop in Fulton who lost their job, completely out of line, you know, it's – you're a public figure. You know, I, I agree with uh, your freedom of speech, but just know that when you accept that position, you're basically signing a contract saying, I'm going to hold myself to a higher standard, whether it's against my beliefs or not. But, yeah. you know, 
who's to say that if one of those cops stepped in in that video, they wouldn't have lost their job as well for basically defying police, uh, you know, actions, essentially. It's, you know, it's it's just the world we live in. And that'd be a much better protest of saying, hey, you know, that cop should keep his job than, uh, you know, otherwise. But there's, you know, it's it, hindsight's 2020. And I, I do think they should be prosecuted. And I don't think they have been to my, the extent of my knowledge, but. Well, that's, uh, yeah, I don't, that's not, I haven't heard anything about it, but I do know that like, I, like I said, I see both sides, but it's like, I feel bad for someone who had their car parked in the fucking road and it gets burnt down and they had nothing to do with the shit, you know, like now you're just impacting other people that really don't deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a shame. And it's a shame that they have to do that or they feel like they have to do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm very I, I support both sides and that's to an extent as well. You know, I, even if it's, you know, a, a huge worldwide issue or if it is just a normal every day where our biggest issue is COVID-19, it's, uh, you know, you still see ignorance and you can acknowledge it and say, that's not someone I want to associate myself with. And that's what I do every day. But I mean, it's, it is what it is. You know, it's, it's tough. It's a fine line though, because I do see both sides. I do see, um, you know, whatever. But like I was saying earlier, I've met so many people along the way that, you know, it's, I'm not at all narrow minded when it comes to accepting people for who they are, whether it's any religion, any race, any gender, any, anything, it's, you're a good person, you're a bad person, you come from this past, and here's your current, you know, your present, and here's what your, your values are going to lead you to in the future. And that's all that just one thing I never understood is being able to to judge someone or, or make a decision about who, who someone is before you even know who they are, before you actually know them. Like that just doesn't make any sense to me because you just don't know the guy. Plain and simply, you, you don't know the person. So yeah. all you're doing is using preconceived notions, whether you developed them yourself or you, you were they were instilled on you as a child or you read about them online. You're well, just projecting that onto someone who you don't that, know. That's what I hate about especially as we go County um, during this, everything that's going on is, you know, there are so many people here that have never s left, which is fine. But you look at Oswego high school, senior class, I graduated with 363 people. There were probably 15 total minorities and maybe two of them were African-American. So therefore you haven't really experienced that anyone of a of a minority to say you have a, a clear picture of hey you know that's someone i can associate with or don't want to associate with and that's still going to be a bias if you say otherwise but you don't have the perspective you know to say yeah. one way or another or or you know whatever it may be and it's like you know if you and that's oswego oswego is one of the higher populated when it comes to especially when it comes to hispanic latino it's really not a bad i want to say it's 94.6 caucasian about 4% Hispanic Latino, which I'm in that mix. And then like 0.5 for African American or something of the sort, the demographic and, as we go. And it's, it's like, I would imagine that would be a, a way that racism is perpetuated is these ecosystems where there aren't many minorities and it's all white people. And they sort of get into that ecosystem where they're just, it's, it's alien to them. Yep. Another races. And because they live in this one area where they grew up without coming into contact with these people, it's 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 a very strange like it's just going to keep perpetuating it, and I I think that might be part of the problem yep. is the lack of diversity in these areas. Yeah, from traveling, just, around, I, I played people from all walks of life, and I'll never sure. forget. I, I played with a, a team in Syracuse. We we're Syracuse Saltcats, which the team's based out of Syracuse, but everyone we only had two guys, I think, from the 315 and only three total from New York state. So we were just based out of New York. You know, for me, I was one of the locals, but I mean, our, our demographic, we had someone of an Asian descent. We had myself, we had uh, eight people that were uh, black. We had one guy was homosexual, you know what it's, and it is what it is. That was just our, our scene makeup. There was no judgment. There was no, and you know, anything prior to meeting these guys and, that's a very similar situation to my Roswell team is I still talk to these guys every day, every single yeah. day, you know, I just don't get like why people even care so much. No, nope, it's like until it's really affecting you personally, 
it's ingrained. It doesn't matter. It's ingrained in, in a lot of people to just believe that, oh, hate. Here's, yeah. here's what I see. Here's what I see. I haven't heard you speak yet. I haven't seen your actions. I haven't, you haven't done me wrong, but here's what I see. And here's what I've seen in the past of people from your background or your race or your gender and immediate hate. And it's just, it's unjustified. Yeah. And and a lot of times they don't even have uh, a justification for it. Correct. Correct. So and about perspective, man, you don't always get it here. So where is that coming from? I'm going to, I'm gonna I'm gonna quick switch topics. I yeah. agree. <laughs> we're getting on, we're getting off on a rampage here. Uh, Kyle, if you could be, are you familiar with the book series Animorphs? I'm not. You're I'm, not. Well, let me I'm let not, me educate you. I'm not overly uh, informed on it. So it's this book series where these kids can morph into animals. Okay. All right, I'll show you. I'll show you uh, a couple covers. Uh, so my question for you is: uh, if, if you've seen the books, you've seen the movies, you've seen the shows, you played the games, you you know what I'm talking about, right? You see this? Oh yeah. Oh, I watched this growing up. Yeah, but I'm not. Yeah, I don't remember yeah. that well, but I do know. I knew it from somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So if, if you could be any animorph, uh, what what would you be? Uh. But, you know, what would you be if you could? Or, like, why would it be? From the book why, would it, why would you choose a droidica from the Phantom Menace? Oh, <laughs> let me take a look. I'm looking at some covers here. Yeah, I used to read these. You you could pick you could pick any any uh, animal or droidica. You know. Oh my. Oh no. I Isn't feel like everybody used to pick these books when they were uh, would go to like the book fair or whatever at school because they didn't want to read actual books. They were just like, "This looks cool." Yeah, I they were like, "Let's, I let's check this out." Didn't remember until I started looking at the covers here, and yeah, I was like, yeah. "Yeah, that's but, it." And I would, see the little evolution of a, a human into something different here. So, would you yeah. an animal or would you pick a droidica? Because you can also pick a droidica. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's that's so tough. I mean, I feel like I might have to go for uh, an ele- elephant of some kind. You know, I want to go for the biggest thing in the book so that people are more feared. You know, I'm ju- I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know. Droidica shreds elephant. <laughs> like, <laughs> <why am> I- <laughs> okay, I like that. Why am I looking at that? But just so you know, droidica shreds any and dude one droidica every elephant in the world droidica one 100 to one odds or yeah. one 100 percent odds you got to choose carefully man i think I'm, i still think i'm gonna be a b dude i'm still sticking with b yeah seth wants to be a b i don't understand it yeah but like you're hard to hit you know what i mean you can you can evade real quick what about a raven i would like the ability to fly i feel like you know that'd be pretty sweet that's but I mean. you could pick a flying elephant, but um, you're you're blind in one eye and deaf in the other ear. So you'll yeah, be you blind in your left somehow. eye and deaf in your right ear. Yeah, that's fine. You're fine with that? The opposite sides. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. But half your face is just completely useless other than eating some food or something, you know? So yeah. it's, I would like to go separate here, but I think I could do that. You know, you have to offset a little. All right, yeah. and also your teeth are like really tiny for an elephant, like, like, like <laughs> fundamentally tiny. Like, like you have wicked small teeth, and you can never clean them properly. <laughs> so they're gonna start rotting out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're, then you're, then you're like, you're like a half, you're like a half blind, half deaf elephant with like a bunch of dead teeth. No one's gonna want to hang out with you. It's but okay. you can fly. But you can fly. So. Yeah, flying elephant, one hundred percent. Just so you know. Droidica shreds that elephant. Well, but here's the question: when when you when you anamorph back into a human, do Does you still human? have shitty teeth? Like, do you no, still no, have no, shit no. teeth? It's my animal animal version. Version. This this animal animal <laughs> well, so you go. I could very well be a great. You know, I could be a model in my human form, and next thing you know, I go to the shittiest flying elephant in history. <laughs> yeah, you go to the you go <laughs> to the, the shittiest flying elephant in history. Yeah, you go to the golem of elephants. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's tough. World, I mean, world, we're going to let you see a flying elephant, but here's one that is just completely not worth it. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. But you would get the sympathy vote. You'd make so much money. <laughs> They'd be like, you know, we'll put up posters that are like uh, half blind, half deaf, dead tooth elephant. Uh, last tour ever. <laughs> and then the tour never ends. Like, <laughs> we just we just parade you around for like the rest of your life. Jake's going to have pops on his Nelson funeral home locked up. I'm going to be chained. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This and I'm going well, like, to I'm gonna be a droidicon. I'm going to watch you. Are and we then, doing this in like a... And then, the then when I go to world, kill you, though? I'm like... Yeah. Are, are, is this in an Animorph world, though, or are you the only Animorph? That's the real question. Because uh, you can't really make a big event out of it if he's the, if he's not the only Animorph. Here we go. I'll, we'll add an we'll add an it follows approach to it. Anybody that you have unprotected sex with can also be an animorph. Okay, so you're just spreading the animorph all around. <laughs> yeah, dude. You're just, yeah that's... and then anybody that <laughs> is it something society <laughs> fears? Are they going to have the same things that I pass along, or <laughs> are they going to turn into their own animorph? That's another question. But, yeah, they just yeah. want the ability, though. They want to give it a shot. Say I'm going to be sexually active. I have to say, would you like to be a blind and deaf and horrible teeth one, uh, flying elephant? And if they say no, then I'm going to have to say, unfortunately, I'm not interested. And they have to sign a waiver and shit before <laughs> yeah. they hop on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you could have like a horde. But I think one droidica still takes out a whole horde of those elephants. Yeah, they should put it in um that uh, battle simulator thing. Totally accurate battle simulator. They yeah, should put yeah. droidicas in there. That'd be sick, dude. Um, no, I was thinking also. Uh, unfortunately for you two, I was thinking. <laughs> um, uh, who do you guys think is um like since you've been watching sports, and we can pick any sport. Uh, what superstar that you grew up watching do you think is going to be forgotten by the time that you have children? Like when you like, let's say you have kids and you're watching NFL or baseball, basketball, hockey, and they're asking you like, Oh dad, who did you like watching? And you're like, I liked watching this guy. And they're like, who's that? Like, it's, it's like, you know, like a guy that was a legend right now that will like not even be thought of in 20 or 30 years, you know, that is that's actually a great question. And honestly, I could probably tell you a few from each sport. So that's tough. If we're going to narrow it to one, I got to do some thinking. We can yeah. think that each should come up with one. Um, I think, um, honestly, I think a guy like Chad Johnson. Yeah, I could see Chad Johnson. forgotten in like 20 years. I mean, yeah. people, people oh. will remember him for being like really goofy and kind of a diva. But people, all, like people, are already forgetting how great he was, and he only retired like eight years ago. Well, I, I think about from a baseball perspective, and I, actually, this is even a name myself where I'm like, man, I forgot how good he was. Is Troy Tulowitzki? You know, he yeah. had a great game with the Rockies, and then next thing you know, his career went downhill, and no one talks about him. And just by off chance, his name gets brought up. You're like, wow, he was the best player in baseball as of 2007. You know, yeah. <laughs> maybe. And it's well, that's the thing is like, you, I, I'm trying to think of guys who like aren't in the record books or aren't going to go to the hall of fame, you know, like guys who had really like a good run, like a clay Matthews kind of guy. Yeah. If had you're a in the good hall couple of years. Remember one way or another, you know, if they didn't yeah. hear your name, otherwise they're going to see you in the hall of fame and immediately associate you with greatness. So that's a yeah. good too. Who's not going to be a hall of famer that is right, clay Matthews like I, not a hall of famer. I think he might be, he I might end up being. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily know a lot about the NFL ballot either. So it's hard to say. You know, baseball, I can eyeball just about anyone and say he's not getting it. He's getting it. Right? He, he might. He could. He's got a Super Bowl, six Pro Bowls, one first-team All-Pro, two second-team All-Pros, and a Defensive Player of the Year. And he yeah. was also pretty big in the media, too. He's still going as well, I believe, isn't he? He's, he's still playing, yeah. Now. Less I knew. But I think he gets in. I think he gets in, and... You know, he was a big part of the Packers in that time frame. And sure, that's know, what I mean. Hall, or like a Charles Woodson or something. You know what I mean? Charles Woodson was, you know, he, he probably, I don't know if he's in the Hall of Fame already, but he, you know, he either isn't he or is to, going right? to be. He's, yeah, I believe he's, he is. 
He's arguably like the greatest defensive back in football history. If you right, include but do, college, but do you think and- like, do you think like, twenty, thirty years down the line, the kids that are just getting into football are going to know who he is, kind of thing? I think yes, exclusively because he has a uh, Heisman Trophy as a defensive player. I gotta kill this spider. <laughs> I mean, you wow. can look. You can kind of go all throughout sports currently and think about all these guys that have major impacts. And like, if we just keep it to football, Julian Edelman's a great player. Oh he, yeah. He won't be a hall of famer. I don't believe. And I don't think he'll be remembered in 15 years, let alone 30 years from now. Yeah. Uh, you know, Tom Brady is a given. He 100% is going to be remembered forever. Got the spider. Um, you know, I question even like Troy Polamalu guys like that. Like he's one of the best safeties to ever live. I would say. And I don't know if he'll oh, be yeah. around for 30 years. He will yeah, be he's, he's, definitely, he's definitely like top 14. But that's not a position that's necessarily coveted either. You know, all these guys, like, think about who we still talk about from different sports. And it's, you know, uh, the Dan Marinos, the, um, you know, in basketball, Michael Jordan, uh, Kareem, you know, those are all huge guys. But you don't necessarily remember the guy who, hey, I was on that team. It's the Scottie Pippins of the world where you were overshadowed. Yeah. And you, but you're still a great basketball player. You're still. Who was, who was the center, that was under Peyton Manning for a long time with the Colts? Jeff Saturday. Yeah, him. Yeah. That's a guy. Because it's like player. one of the best centers to ever play. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. No one's gonna know who the fuck Jeff Saturday. Is. I barely could. I couldn't even remember his name. Correct. Really? He's on TV all the time. <laughs> well, when you said it, yeah. Let's oh, keep. I don't watch. I don't watch sports media usually. Let's keep it to Syracuse greats who had a great NFL career. Marvin Harrison, Dwight Freeney, and Donovan McNabb. Are any of them going to be remembered in 30 years? Probably not. And all three were incredible. Incredible careers. That's a good point, yeah. And it's really unfortunate because McNabb was really fucking good. Was really fucking good. Oh, yeah. Marvin Marvin Harrison, in my opinion, is on the Mount Rushmore of receivers. I think he's better... I don't maybe not the Mount Rushmore, but I think he's one of the best yes. ever. You know, six Mount Rushmores he may be on. No, he's a, he's a great receiver. I think you could, you could put him in the top ten. I think you'd put him like ninth or tenth, maybe. Yeah, I just think I mean you know as for receivers, and, and we're not even done, but like they say, Julio Jones should probably be on that Mount Rushmore. Jerry Rice, one hundred percent. I mean, he's the best to ever. Do it. Randy you know Moore. what's Terrell yeah. Owens? Yeah. You know, I don't know if I put Marvin Harrison and Randy Moss in the same sentence necessarily, but I think, um, yeah, I don't think I would put those two in the same sentence. But I think uh, a guy that a lot of people would consider the best, not the greatest, but the best ever, is fucking Megatron, man. Elvin Johnson. Oh my God, yeah. What's that? I think Larry Fitzgerald's up there too. Yeah, Fitzgerald has a lot of a lot of. Stats that are pretty high up. He's also got he's also got a lot of seasons. He's played a long time, so yeah, his numbers are up. Like a leader as well. He's well spoken, well respected around the sport. Yes, you know. So that's another thing. Jeter isn't necessarily the best shortstop to ever live, but when it comes to his on field and off field, I guess the way he presented himself, he's one hundred percent of all. You know, right. And Fitz is Fitz is like super um like loyal to his team too. Yes. Yep. But if you guys have ever seen, he's very uh, involved with charities, and he's very, very well spoken. And you miss that across sports, a- across the board, is not everyone is always the most well spoken, or you know, always polite and respectful and courteous on the media. Like Larry Fitzgerald has never had his name slandered around the league for anything he's ever done or said. You know, right. it's yeah. otherwise it's all skill based, where people are like, "Oh, Larry Fitzgerald sucks," or whatever it may be, or he can't catch a pass. But it's never he's a jackass or he did this. Did you hear about how Larry Fitzgerald got in trouble? Never. And you has, don't even hear him. You don't even hear people talk bad about his skills because you yeah. keep, they're undeniable, you know. Exactly. So it's like he's a uh, he's eleven-time Pro Bowler. <laughs> yeah. Like Jesus. That's actually crazy. I didn't know it was eleven. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I think it's wild to me that Jerry Rice was so good that nobody talks about Steve Largent anymore. <laughs> like yeah. like Steve Largent by and by and large like when he retired was the undisputed best receiver of all time or greatest receiver of all time with all the stats he retired with and Jerry Rice just erased him from history I think about some other like 
Tory Holt is a guy we'll never hear about again after uh, we, oh, we really don't just... anymore. Great yeah, receiver. That's what I was thinking. Great. That's who I was trying to think of because yeah. I, I was thinking about the Rams with with Kurt Warner. Yeah, Tory Holt had a great career. Marshall. Yeah. Great. Uh, the other receiver, Isaac Bruce, right? Isaac Bruce. Yep. These yeah, guys. That's what I was thinking. Was back in that era, like Donald Driver kind of guys. Yeah. Yeah, this this Donald Driver. Yeah, I mean, you had uh, uh, what's his name, Wal- Javon Walker. You had uh, Amon Green. Oh yeah, Amon Green. Yeah, I forgot about Amon Green. I watched a game the other day. Uh, I don't remember if it was this. It might have been a playoff game, but I was watching that whole team and I was like, wow, these this team was nasty as hell. I mean, that was back in the Brett Favre days, but. Yeah. Oh yeah, they were good. Oh shit, fucking um, Andre Johnson. Oh, from the Texans. Oh, yeah, sure. What the fuck's he up to? Andre Johnson. That guy was like, <laughs> I still remember when he he turned Cortland Finnegan into Cortland Innigan because he beat the f out of him. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> you remember, you've never heard that before. I remember that. Yeah, I've never heard that before. I do remember the fight, but I've never heard that before. <laughs> yeah, dude. He turned Cortland Finnegan into Cortland Innigan because he beat the f out of him. <laughs> Love it. So let's see, uh, uh, Dre. Never going to get talked about again, and his career wasn't really that good, but he was definitely someone who was in the media. Is Pac Man Jones? Oh my God, yeah. Dude. Yeah, I to hear it's, about what Pac Man's so here. crazy because, like, that guy. I remember my dad. Oh, Adam Jones is not who I wanted. It is Adam Jones as Pac Man Jones, but I got Adam Jones, the baseball player. Right. Yeah, yeah he, grab a beer. Word. You got to just type in. You got to type in Pac Man Jones. Well, it's crazy because, like, uh, Kyle's out of the room. But it's wild because Pac-Man was, like, this super hyped player. And then he doesn't get a Pro Bowl, or he doesn't get an All-Pro until his ninth season. So he yeah. was he was 30 when he got his first All-Pro season and then literally didn't do shit. Like, it was so weird, this guy. that, that Like, I remember when he signed with the Cowboys, that was, like, a huge deal. Like... He was going to turn the Dallas defense around. And I'm pretty sure he didn't even – he was suspended for that – most of that year. Um, But I'm trying to well, see. What he got it? into some shit, didn't he? Well, yeah. he. Um, I think he shot himself or he shot a gun off. He and, shot something. He shot somebody, I think. I don't know. Um, uh, he, okay. He was at a – okay. What the fuck? Uh – on the morning of February 19th, 07, during the NBA All-Star Game weekend, Adam Jones was involved in an altercation with an exotic dancer at a local strip club. Jones and American rapper Nelly, along with someone known as Richard Rich, showered the stage with hundreds of $1 bills, an act known as Making It Rain. Club promoter Chris Mitchell then directed his dancers to collect the money. According to the club's co-owner, Jones became enraged when a dancer became, began taking the money without his permission. He allegedly grabbed her by her hair and slammed her head on the stage? A guard intervened. Jones threatened the guard's life. Mitchell and a male associate left the club with a garbage bag full of 80 grand and two Breitling watches. Uh, what was yeah, the none other? of that seems that seems that all seems okay. Uh oh, he got caught uh, paying extortion money to people that same year. Hmm. So yeah, it, he he was suspended for twenty two of twenty eight games and then came back, did jack shit. Probably got in a fight. He had a couple on field altercations as well. Yeah, that's right. He did get in in trouble in game. He got a he he was like he would he would get like personal fouls or like um like un uh yeah unnecessary roughness and stuff like that all the time and like just being an asshole. But he was in he fought he was a TNA wrestler. Some of these guys in pro he sport- wanted he won a tag team title with Ron Killings in TNA. What the fuck? Oh, that's our truth. He won a tag team title with our truth. <laughs> <laughs> not many people can say that. What the fuck, dude? How is Adam Jones not the most famous fucking football player of all time? <laughs> He's up there. Oh, 
I mean, think about some of this in-game stuff that goes on, though. Like Ron Artest back against the Bad Boys Pistons in the Palace. Oh, the Bad the Boys 2.0, yeah. With, uh, with um, I mean, you Chauncey, got Chauncey yeah. Billups and Ben and Wallace and Rip. The Pistons are absolutely disgusting. We talk about it all the time with a lot of my friends, and that is the most underrated, really role-playing team kind of guys you'll ever see when it comes back to our topic before of, you know, these guys just fit the mold, man. Chauncey Billups, you had Rip Hamilton, Tayshawn, Sheed, yeah. Big Ben. Ugh. You know, Dude, it is, it is absolutely disgusting to me that Ben Wallace is not in the Hall of Fame yet. I do not understand it. Live. The guy won. Maybe, <laughs> we, won should, the... uh, maybe we should have riots. <laughs> <laughs> He won defensive player. I'm ignoring that. He won defensive player of the year four out of five years, was an all star four straight times, five time all NBA, five time all defense. That just blows my mind that he's not. I mean, he's pretty much. Well, don't you have to. Do you have to be put on a ballot? You have to be put on the ballot for the Hall of Fame voting, right? I'm sure. You can't just fan vote for like this guy. In In the NBA, yeah, you have to get nominated and then you have to get in but the thing with the nba that's different from like the nfl and the mlb is that i know with baseball you get how many years of eligibility uh eight something like that it's not as much as you think really like 15 maybe google it Mm, that's a good question because and because and once you're once you don't get elected after so many years you can't get put in and with the NFL, the way it goes is that if you don't get in after so many years, you get put on a senior ballot. Ten for baseball. Ten? That's actually crazy. A lot of people get in on their last last go of it, too, though. You'd be surprised. You know, but it's, that's, some, that's a whole different thing. The Hall of Fame for baseball, I'm really torn on. You know, like Roger Clemens will never get in. Pete Rose will never be in. Barry Bonds will never be in. I'll and never be in. A-Rod. I don't think Alex Rodriguez will ever get in. You'll never get in. Um... But these guys, like, they are the best to do it, man. They are absolutely the best to do whatever they were doing. And I don't care if they – Pete Rose is the biggest corruption in all of sports. I mean, he bet on himself. He wouldn't be the all-time hit leader if he was betting against his, himself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing like true. throwing money away. Yeah, I'm going to put 100000 we lose, and then I'm going to go five for five. You know? I, uh, well, that happened to Sh- – you know, I read the book Shoeless Joe as a kid, and I thought he was a way better player than he really was. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that Shoeless Joe was like the greatest player of all time and well, I mean, he, he was he was pretty good. He was pretty good. Yeah. But um uh I I really enjoy I like the way the baseball does the Hall of Fame because you can look at all those players and you're like, "Yep, they're in." Like you, you, there's not a lot of players that come to mind and I don't know baseball like you two do. But there's not a lot of players that come to mind where I'm like, "Eh, I can I don't see it." Basketball on the other hand, dude, uh, there are so many guys in the basketball hall of fame that like, don't make any sense. And the argument is that the basketball hall of fame is all aspects. So it's professional college international, which makes sense. Well, but I feel they- like there's, there's a lot of like baseball is pretty cut and dry too. Oh, this guy had X amount of homers. This guy had X amount of strikeouts, X amount of wins, X, you know, batting average. It's pretty clear cut. You can't fake the stats, you know, not too, there's never going to be someone who gets in who hit 200, but, you know, they hit, they got out 200 times in a season where they, all the balls were hit were 120 miles an hour and they just went right at somebody. You know, it's, it's not really that skewed. Where in basketball, maybe if you're not the best scorer or, you know, whatever it may be, you may have been a great dribbler. You may have been a great defender. Maybe not when it comes to your blocks and steals, but contested shots. You know, those are stats that can fly under the radar. Well, you don't really see that in a lot of other sports, I feel like. Yeah, it's just tough. Like, baseball's super unforgiving too because i mean you could make contact you know four four out of four times at the plate in a night and you know make good solid contact and it just happens to go right to the shortstop or you know maybe you pop out or maybe the right fielder just gets under it you know yep it's uh it's not you know and you're working hard just to hit the ball yeah i had a kid in college we had two kids one ended up being first team all conference and uh, he hit about 320, and I don't think he had a single ball that was hit hard. Not one. 
It's 320. We have another like Texas leaguers over the over the infield. (laughs) We ended up having a kid who hit about 268, and I don't think he had a single ball hit that was less than 200 miles an hour. And every single (laughs) ball, we're talking like uh, you know, some guy would trip over a hole in you know the ground and roll 30 times and hit off his cleat, bounce in the air, and he would come up with the catch. Like it's you know, talk about the worst in history, and he would just hit. Everything was a diving play or a 200 mile an hour liner that some guy closed his eyes for and caught it. And then you got a guy who somehow found a way to break a metal bat on a bloop, and it finds a hole. You know, it's that's what I mean. Yeah, sometimes guys just luck out, and I mean that's the thing, man. It's like so weird when people like when you look at batting averages. These are professional baseball players, and they're you know batting 300 on you know if they're like it's. You look at it and you go, oh, well, they're professionals. They should be able to hit the ball almost every time. That's just not the case, especially yeah. with the pitchers nowadays that are throwing yeah. the way that they're throwing, with the command that they're throwing, the the action that they're getting. Well, that's like, another thing with sports too, man, is the games are just – they've changed. You know, to talk about the greatest of all time or, you know, even how the Hall of Fame has evolved, there weren't Araldus Chapmans back in baseball in 1907. There weren't yeah. Giancarlo Stantons who's – negative five percent body fat and six four two seventy you know yeah. you just don't see it anymore man so i mean a guy throwing 106 back then you used to have pitchers even in like say the 20s or 30s that would throw both ends of a double header i don't know about you but i can't throw 260 pitches in a day no you know? well that's the thing is you know every sport evolves but that's why it's so crazy when you see a mike trout come along and he's just like that much I don't... at the current yeah. game yeah i mean it's it's Ooh. And his swing is like just textbook, and he puts the ball in the gap all, every game, it seems like. So you're yeah. like, how does this guy do it? And all these other professional baseball players, they've been playing baseball their entire lives, they can't do that the way he does it. And he's only 30 years old or 20. He's younger than me, I think. He's, he's 26 think he's or 27 or something. He's probably around, about like Trout. Yeah. Yeah. He's young. He's an absolute freak, man, and in all aspects of the game, too, because that's another thing with baseball is it's really pretty offensive. You know, you won't see a guy who hit 240 who has the best glove and arm in history. He's an athletic center yeah. fielder. He's fast, yeah. you know. He's a great defender. He's a great hitter. In yeah. all aspects, too, he's not just power or not just contact. He's going to hit 300 with 50 bombs, and he's going to make 20 diving plays and have a 99% fielding percentage. I know. I almost had a oh. fucking – I almost had a party the day they re-signed him. Because I'm an Angels fan. Yeah. Uh, like, so keep I keep to that guy. Do not let that guy go. Yeah. Do not let him. I don't care how much like you have to pay him. It doesn't matter. You keep that guy. Okay, hang on. It says he's, um, as of 2019, he led all active major league ball players in career slugging percentage and on base plus slugging. What is, what is slugging? Is slugging when you get contact? What is that? Slugging is like your... I want to say it's amount of bases per at bat. So the max slugging would be like a 400 or 4,000, whatever that number, 4.000, whatever. And usually your slugging is going to come out to a decimal. But for example, if I have four at bats and I get hit two doubles, that's four bases, my slugging would be a one. You know? And you yeah. typically, oh, okay. you typically, your odds, if you have a single in four at bats and you go one for four, your slugging's 0. 0.250. Okay. So Mike Trout's. Uh, slugging is, is supposed to be ridiculously good. 0.58. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. And the kids, he's, he's 28. So he's not even, he's not even a year. He was born in the same year as me. He's not even a year younger than me. Well, think about that, man. When you think, think about the math of it, yes, though, Seth, I like you more. If you get four, if you get four at bats, if his, he's at a 0.5, then what's the math on that? He's averaging two bases a game in four at bat games. That could be ridiculous. two for four with two singles. That could be one for four with a double, you know, and it's it's going to fluctuate from there. But that's, yeah, that's incredible, man. I mean, if you can go that's one for four with a double or two for four, two for four with two singles a game, that's a great, great season. Dude, even if you can get on base every game, like, and that's exactly. that's ridiculous. He's closer to a three for five kind of average, you know, three well, bases. His, his on base plus slugging is one. So what's that mean? Uh, your on base percentage is just how many times you're getting on, you know, so not – not counting errors. It's like if you have four, say you get up to the plate five times and you go 0 for 4 with a walk, you know, you're basically went 1 for 5 in terms of slugging. So that's 200, you know. So that means his on-base percentage is about 500 as well or about 420. 
So that means yeah. if he has 10 at-bats, he's getting on a little over four times, whether that's a hit or a walk. Dude, that's he, he gets fuck. walked a lot. He gets walked that's a lot. So that's so wild. Thing. That's actually so fucking crazy yeah. to me. But but that's the thing is when you take a walk, it doesn't count as an at bat. So you know it doesn't help you except for your on base percentage. It's the only time it reflects on a statistic. That's why people like on base percentage too, though. Yeah. And plus he he's fast, so he can steal. So it's oh, it's yeah. a good it's all around. He's just good at he's yeah. just good at the game. I think he may very well be the most separated from the pack in any sport currently. I mean, when you watch him, you're like, this guy is a creative character. Like this kid is like, I made him in like MLB the show or something. And I maxed out all of the stats. There's no one in another sport. Like, I think if you look at say the NBA, you know, there's someone who can hold their own with LeBron. You look at the NFL, you know, whoever you want to say is the best player, which that is a very, very touchy subject for a lot of it's people. Aaron Donald. <laughs> Pro- for, for their position. <laughs> Actually, yeah. it's, like, it is <laughs> without a shadow of a doubt. The best at their respective position is De- Aaron Donald. I can see that. Oh, yeah. As, oh, as far as, like, yeah, his position separated from the pack. Yeah. Like, but that's yeah. what the route is to the entire game of baseball. Oh, you might someone sure. who hits – for as good of contact as him or someone who hits for as many home runs as him or someone who makes just as good of plays defensively. But none of those people typically have more than one tool that is to trout standard. And he's a five tool guy at all five being the best at it basically, you know, or up there, he might not be the fastest, but he's up there. Yeah. It's sort of like um, the way that like Sidney Crosby was when he first started off, like he was just, he wasn't the best goal scorer, but he was one of the best. He was probably the best playmaker. He was really good on defense. Like uh, Red Wing, 13. Pablo Datsuk. Datsuk, yeah. Was like, he, he was great. He was one of the best offensive players, but he was also like objectively the best defensive forward in the league pretty yeah. much his whole career. Speaking but, of Chris Sale. Love it. I love the mustache. But watch this swing, though. I mean, that's a low pitch. He loves those low pitches, and he just drives the ball so well. Against one of the best pitchers in all of baseball, if you ask me. And that's a, I mean, that's a grandy right there to tie the game. Wait, what pro team do you like? The Yankees? I'm a Yankee fan. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sick. Same. Born and raised, man. It's for as long as I can remember. My brother's like the defiant child, so he's a Packers fan. He's a uh, Red Sox fan. He's a Celtics fan. You know, and honestly, the only one that my family has kind of pushed on us to like a certain sports team is the Yankees. And, you know, he just went against the grain. But as for stuff, it was we watched, you know, my grandpa, like my grandparents were big on watching the games, but it was only to, to bet on them, not because they actually cared who won or lost. Right. I wonder, I always wonder how far that um Yankees push sort of stretches across the country. Like people on the West Coast are like actually Yankees fans, you know? I think more than you think. Because you see it a lot here just because it's it, we're in New York. It's very generational, too, because people are front runners, man. At the end of the day, like, look at the New England fan base we have around here, which is fine. You know, I don't care. As long as you can tell me enough about the team and they weren't always the best or tell me when you started liking them and give me a reason why. At least tell me who the quarterback is, you know? Exactly. Yeah, but when you look at even generationally, like, a lot of these – teams that are kind of you know huge nationally a lot of the people would fit the time frame of you'd start liking them you know they were the best at your childhood or they were you know up there or most talked about or you know and well like i lived in new mexico they don't have a single pro sports team in the entire state except for the albuquerque isotopes which is a triple a <laughs> affiliate in uh major league baseball and um so a lot of them you know i had a host family there and my host mom is a Chiefs fan. Uh, I think she's a Dodgers fan, maybe. Something who like are that. the Isotopes? A, uh, I can't remember who they're the minor league affiliate they, for. I wanted to say the Rockies, but I don't know for sure. It's. I'm trying to think. Oh, I, I think it is the Rockies because they're the Isotopes the, are like purple, aren't they? Uh, that's what I don't. I don't know because I know like there's just in that general vicinity. There's the Chihuahuas in El Paso. It's they're, the Rockies. Is it the Rockies? Yeah. They're the closest as well. You know, typically you're pretty close to your minor league, at least your AAA affiliate. 
Well, yeah, except for when we were the when Syracuse was the the AAA for uh, Washington. Yeah, the Nationals were the furthest they've gone away though, because if you look before that, it was the Blue Jays, and before that, it was the Yankees, I think. Yeah. And even now they're the Mets. You know, it's New York stays in New York kind of thing. Or I gotta say, yeah, that's definitely way better. It makes a lot more sense too. Oh, I forgot that they're the Syracuse Mets now. That's fucking crazy to me. I the Chiefs all the time and had to correct myself. And yeah, they're the Chiefs. Still... They were the Sky Chiefs for a lot of people. Yeah, I was gonna say when we were all kids, they were the Sky Chiefs. I still have the hat. That's like the the baseball a hat, hat with a hat on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then they yeah. go to the yeah, I... and they have the train, and now they're the Mets, and it just doesn't even make sense, man. No, and yeah. it's like it... um, it's it's like the Syracuse Crunch, how they used to be the Yeti. And now they're they were the Blue Jackets farm I team. Like thing. superhero with some goggles on. Yeah, and, and it yeah, it's nice. dude. It looks, it looks like I went it, on a drunk night, and I decided to take my shirt off and put some goggles on and run around town with a cape. It looks like one of those little figurines from like those uh, those hockey games that are like you play on the table. That's yeah, what it yeah. looks like. Yeah, it's like just a generic <laughs> like army man type plastic yep. character. Yeah, I, I gotta say the Mets makes more sense from a, a affiliate standpoint. But the, like I don't know why they needed to change. They felt the need to change the name. Yeah, you know? the Sky Chiefs. You know, the Sky getting rid of the Sky Chiefs hurt enough because that was my childhood when Deion Sanders was playing for the Chiefs, neon, yeah. neon, and everyone went to watch him. And now I get to watch Tebow, which is a blessing. You know, the biggest piece of shit in baseball. He sucks. <laughs> um, going back, we had a guy. We had a Paul Paul Esden on. Um, yeah, I like Paul. I know yeah. Paul very well. Yeah, he said he he said uh he's talked to Tebow a couple times and he said he's actually he's a friendly guy. It's just a matter of like I don't know, Tebow's a a personality, a very like uh I don't know, di- controversial, I guess, in a weird way. He's yeah. polarizing. Yeah. Well, I don't even I look at like I'm sure he's a great guy, but from a baseball aspect and being a baseball player who, you know, I played with guys that are 100% better, who never got higher than where we were at. Sure. And sure. not making hit T-ball money or anyone in that league. And I'm like, you're taking a guy, he's a consistent 195 hitter, which, uh, you know, I don't know about you guys, but if one of you was hitting 195 or if I was hitting 195, I would be walking my way back to New York or, you know. You wouldn't be playing there. Yeah, that's for sure. I'd be famous. I'd be and famous. You guys don't have there. enough ambition. <laughs> He's yeah. keeping his spot, man, because he's a money yeah, maker. Like the he fucking is. shoulders for it, bro. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I want to go back to talking about how much better Mike Trout is to, than the rest of the league, but I want to circle that back to uh, Deion Sanders as well, because uh, I want to keep talking about sports, and I've had like three Guinnesses today. <laughs> um. That's it. I also had a lime read. I have another one right here. I'll open it right now. That must have gone from the Garoppolo consent then. No, I uh, got it from Big M. I saw Mr. Bishop there. Did you guys have Mr. Bishop for Spanish class? I did not, but I do. Oh, I did actually. Yeah, I had. I went. I went it was. It was very. It was very strange. He was one of my favorite teachers, and I literally haven't seen him since I graduated. And like, I'm. I walk into Big M. I had to get two things. I had to get liquor for, or I had to get booze for um, the podcast because I only had uh, three beers left. I had to get booze and I had to get shredded lettuce because I was making burritos for dinner. So I walk in, immediately grab a bag of shredded lettuce. I have my headphones on, so I don't even notice anything. And I see this guy standing there, like, I grab the lettuce, and he's like, I thought he was staring past me, but apparently he was staring right at me, trying to talk to me. And I go into the cooler at Big M, and I have in my hands, like, in my arms, I have three limeritas, <laughs> like, like cradling them. And I walk out, and it's Mr. Bishop staring me dead in the eyes, and he goes, Senior Jones? And I'm like, Senior Bishop, what's up? <laughs> I, like, took my mask off, took my headphones off, and I was like, yep, what's up, man? I'm totally buying, like, a half a gallon of malt liquor right now. I, did, yeah. Bishop. I'm, I went, I went button my freshman year. I had Bishop and cook and I can't remember what year I had each. And then I went back to button Godspeed. You know, that was a blessing in disguise. Cause I love button. I saw her at Stewart's and I was also walking out with alcohol and I believe she was doing the same. Guaranteed. And, uh, but, um, awesome. my question was, uh, are there any players in, we can, we can do all sports too. Cause it's crazy. We can, I think Paul is the only other person we've had on that can actually talk about every sport. Maybe Kevin. Um, are there any 
players in any sport that you think at the time of their retirement when you compare positions that they're like that much better, similar to how Mike Trout is. My first thought was Deion Sanders, because I think he's that much better than the next best corner time of retirement. I guess maybe, uh, maybe, not at the, maybe not at the time of retirement, maybe when they get inducted in the hall, maybe, or like to compare to their peers. I don't know their primes, maybe their, their best year. Then you could even argue Champ Bailey, I guess. I, mean, I don't know. Go time of retirement, though. I mean, he's back, I guess, now. But Rob Gronkowski retired as the elite tight end. The only one I think could be mentioned with him is Travis Kelsey. But I still don't think he's there, you know. But at retirement, not too many people leave on a high note. <laughs> you know, most of them let their careers crumble, and then they get forced into retirement. Well, yeah, they. I think there's a downturn, and then they realize there's a downturn. And that's when they leave. Yeah. But- some of them let it drag too long. Like I was talking about Allen Iverson the other day. That's yeah. my best player ever. Oh and, man, dude, they say Allen Iverson was one of the best football players ever. Yeah, he was a Gatorade yeah. player of the year. Yeah. They say yeah, he, he was, was like just an unbelievable named, quarterback. Uh, yeah, he was he's the only person to be named player of the year, like high school player of the year for for football and basketball. Yeah. Yeah. And it, people were saying I, I watched something on ESPN about him and he was saying like he got as good as he got at his second sport. Like that wasn't basketball was his second sport. He wanted to play football. He, uh, I bet I would assume his play style has to be similar to Lamar Jackson. And yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he was a fast yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. Fast, <laughs> and not to mention, he also is a, a incredible basketball player, but yeah. Um, yeah. I meant, okay, so I want to rephrase that because I, I guess at the time of retirement was the wrong way to phrase it, but I guess it would be like compared to their, um, you know, like you mentioned Gronk, I th- like if you take at every hall of famers or every great players, like best ever year, you know, I think Gronk definitely takes the, the spot. I think a guy like, uh, you know, you look at. I don't know. You look at guys like uh, Lawrence Taylor or Reggie White, and I think that Lawrence Taylor and Reggie White are, are like that much better than the next best or the next greatest. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah, like I think like for running backs, and I, I want to say Emmett Smith, but it's he – he's, 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 he's tricky because he was one of those guys similar to um, Trout where he, he wasn't – well, I guess not even similar to Trout, but he like wasn't the best at anything, but he was really good at everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, like, Adrian Peterson was Adrian Peterson was Adrian like that Peterson. too, though. But oh, yeah. Adrian Peterson couldn't catch out of the backfield like Emmett could. You know what I mean? Like, uh, maybe not as good. I mean, he could catch, but it wasn't as consistent. I guess you could say. Yeah, like Adrian Peterson, pound for pound, at least for me personally, and the best middle rusher you'll ever see. When yes, comes, he's he's you know, the best pure running back I've ever. I mean, that guy is a fucking monster. He's like 6'2", 220, and he's faster and stronger than everybody. Like, people talk about Saquon Barkley or Zeke or um, McCaffrey. He's and it's, unbelievable, bro. He's, he's, uh, is crazy. he's very like, well-rounded. He's like the next LT or the next Emmett or Walter Payton. Mm-hmm. Speaking of LT, he may very well have had the best running back streak in history of about three years. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he was he, like, ridiculous. He was clear cut. Yeah. He, he made the best three touchdowns ever. Yeah, I. And, 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 and you ever watched his? Um, I didn't mean it. I keep cutting you off, but I'm kind of lagging a bit. I'm sorry. No, Have no. you ever seen his football life documentary? No, it's Dude, probably it's, four minutes long because he was only good for four years. But <laughs> <laughs> his four years were the best four years ever. I'm telling you straight up. He had a long. He had a long career though, didn't he? He played for a long years. time. He ended up playing about like eight, I think, but he only was good for about three. He played what eleven years. How are you a running back for that long, though? That's crazy. In three That's years, like he had, um, to put his average for his career at high numbers. He literally was incredible. You know, pe- people like to knock Emmett Smith, but he played two hundred twenty-six games. The guy played for fucking where the where the hell is it? He played fifteen years. As a yeah. running back, as the bell cow, he was the only running back on those teams. That's why I'm not a huge fan of statistics in sports that are oh. all time. When it comes to a, just a solidified number, I like averages. You yeah. know what I mean? 
So, like, that's what I like about baseball a lot is, oh, he's the career batting average leader. You know, there is a career hits leader and whatever. But we've all seen the sport where – look at Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is not going to play – he'll probably be five or six seasons short of what Tom Brady played. Mm-hmm. So, I don't expect his stats to be as high as Tom Brady's. Even if I also he- don't. I also don't see Aaron Rodgers having another like 08, 09 year where he was just unbelievably good and consistent and throwing 40 times a game, 40 plus a game. You'll probably never see it again, but it's like the, just the concept of a lot of these, these record books are based on just straight volume. You know, when you have a running back who can just by off chance lasted 16 years, but then you have someone whose stats are being compared against a guy who played 10. You know, let's look at what they did year by year. And even I'll even say go ahead and take their 10 best against their or their five best against their five best. You know, it's it's just such a skewed stat when it comes to just accumulated statistics. I think it's sure. three homers, you know. The the uh Jesus fucking Christ. The 0809 season for Rodgers and then the 2014 season for Peyton and then last year's Mahomes season. Might be the three best QBC. I mean, obviously the sixteen and zero, the 07 Patriots with Brady was insane too. But um, man, yeah. Rogers like Rogers is all like old all, forever will always be my most hated player to play against because he always carves up Dallas. I mean, the dude is just when he's on, he's the greatest I've ever seen. I love. Well, he, he he's. Yeah, he, well, he's fun to watch because um, he's had so many comebacks and like hail mary comebacks and shit like that, and like he's just fun to watch even if you're not a Packers fan. You know, it's fun to watch any quarterback that's able to perform under pressure like that and and do that consistently. What well, sucks for Rodgers, and I think honestly, when it comes to to just raw skill, talent, we're we're talking. You're watching film only, and you can't see any statistics. He may very well be the best quarterback skill wise to live. Honestly. But one, his career got cut, say, four years short because he was behind Brett Favre, where you'd otherwise be a rookie quarterback coming into the league. Two, he, you know, it, it's he didn't always have the same tools as everybody else. Like since his he did have a couple of years where he was loaded. You know, if you can't make it work with Randall Cobb and Jordy Nelson and you know, you he did have all the threats he needed. To be successful, oh, man. When they when they won the the Super Bowl, they had Jordy Nelson, uh, Greg Jennings, Ray. Donald Driver was still there. Um, Dude, and he and, scored a touchdown on a broken leg. Broken leg, Terry <laughs> Sharp. <laughs> Fuck you, Gumby. <laughs> um, how would he yeah. run it with a broken leg? <laughs> Put the team on his back, though, or is that Marshawn Lynch? I, they had a couple of them. That's both of them. Was, he did both. Darren Shopper. Yeah. A- Hold my dick. <laughs> Hardest hitting safety in the league. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. I, luckily, Darren Sharper is going to be a guy that everyone forgets because he's a fucking serial rapist. <laughs> yeah. I was just playing Madden the other day with Gabe Woods, and he was playing as the Ravens, and they have a safety, Tony Jefferson. Yeah the most forgettable name in all of football yo mm. did he have uh lamar ja- is this like a recent madden it was uh 20 yeah yeah okay then he probably won because he had lamar jackson i beat him oh I'm really t- tony jefferson playing the ball on all my passes he would like be in a position to pick it and next thing you know he'd strafe and just go down or he'd face plant and, like if you guys ever seen trailer park boys when they're stealing yeah, yeah. from the cart corral and ricky <sighs> goes back yeah I know that move. Yeah, it happens all the time. And Tony Jefferson. So Gabe's like, Tony Jefferson, one of the worst ball-playing safeties in the league. And Tony (laughs) Jefferson has stuck ever since. We start naming dogs (laughs) Tony Jefferson. I'll tell you what, though, in fucking in the new Madden, like with if you have like the updates, like the roster update, like Lamar Jackson's just stupid. You don't even – you don't call run plays. You just run with Lamar Jackson because he's so fast in that game. He's basically like the Vic – from if like the 06 run, Vic. If you run a Hail Mary and you audible your running back to run a wheel to the same side you like to scramble, yep. literally it's a double-edged sword, man. If you don't use your control it perfectly as a defense, you are absolutely running for 20 or you're throwing for 50. 
Yeah. You know? Yep. You just wait for the the spy, the linebacker, to come yep. at you. If he crashes, you pass. And just if throw he throws over his head, back, you have twenty yards of open space. Yeah, dude. I'm because I, I think I talked about this maybe last week or the week before, where the Madden championships or whatever. The dude who won it won the whole thing just running the ball. He didn't throw a single pass the entire tournament. <laughs> like, so it goes to show you how broken like some of that is too. You can exploit that, you know. Yep. Certain things in that game you can exploit. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, you know what I uh, am not a fan of. Okay, what's that? Uh, I wish I had more lights in this apartment. Because I don't have enough light. I'm craving a chew bad, and I would love to go grab my can of chew. Go right ahead. Another beer, because that's, you know, I just keep ripping. Fucking send it, dude. We'll talk shit about you while you're gone. Go ahead, bro. Hey, am I going to be able to view this after the fact? Send me the link. (laughs) No, we're we're gonna we're gonna ban your IP address from watching this video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're we're gonna have a face we're gonna have a facial recognition scan to watch this. Yeah. If it scans his his dumb face, it's gonna sh- it's gonna brick whatever software he's running. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it's gonna scan his face and just blue screen. The blue screen with the frowny face. I, I have a I have one, I have a thing for him when he gets back. Oh really? But yeah, man. Uh, this is my new apartment. There it is. <laughs> it's pretty dark in there, man. It looks like you don't have many lights because it's like black, pitch black. You know. There it is. There. Wow, that's pretty nice. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Kyle moved me in Saturday. It was, dude, it was such a bitch, man. The and like I said, the 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 shittiest part was fucking the the fucking leather couch. You guys accept guests in here? Sure. Oh. Sure. sure. My sheets are in the wash, but I got my girl Bella. Oh. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> oh my dude, she's gigantic. She's bigger than you even told me she was. One hundred and ten yeah. pounds. The camera angle makes it look like Cloverfield or something, dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's a what, about, from the what, what the fuck, man? What about Cloverfield? What about it, you know? That's a big-ass dog, man. Yeah, she's sweetheart, bro. Hi, honey. <laughs> she's, uh, she's half Rottweiler, half German Shepherd, half Grizzly Bear. Yeah, dude, it reminds me of the Sandlot. <laughs> <laughs> Where they like depicted the dog as being like gigantic. <laughs> well, my brother's playing Call of Duty, so I ran down to grab my chew and a beer, and all I see is come sprinting out and then followed me. So I'm like, that means he's neglecting you. You know, yeah. she's getting attention. You know, he obviously hasn't said a word to her in hours. Well, Hi. she probably doesn't talk back very much. You know. Oh, she does, dude. That's if she comes with me. That means my brother really is not paying attention to her because she hates me. She loves me, but she, I lose the battle every time. If he's, if him or me, she will never spend time with me. It's his dog, technically. He he raised her from birth, and I just <clears> her <throat> when I moved in with my brother. We bought a house together. Bella, look over here. Look over here for the camera. Hello, Dingus. Little, yeah, she's a little camera shy. It looks like. Come on. Look at it. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> He's leaving me. <laughs> I wish I could have a dog here. I'm going to get a dog. No, you don't. Just... You know, do you guys see this? No, I would get oh, a dog. That sh- I get like a Lassiop, so like my, my parents' first dog. Bro, it's disgusting. The amount she sheds makes me sick, but I actually don't mind it, but. For most people, it's hard to have visitors. When look, you at leave. These, look at this! Look at this! Look at this! That's my dog, dude. Green. Oh. 
Look at her little dinghy. Hi, Bill. Look at that. How do they even see? They don't. They don't need to. Dude, they fly. They don't need to see. Really? That one yeah. looks like you can see. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> oh, that, that actually looks exactly like the dog that I grew up with. That's, that's Sierra right there. Oh, see you later, Bill. She was a little bitch. <laughs> oh, wait. There she is. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty accurate like oh wait actually there she is except that, that, that dog probably smells better than sierra did oh, look at this does this teddy bear suit make me look fat <laughs> what are, is there a lossy opso subreddit i wonder if there is there has to be yeah Perfect. She's just sitting outside. She just didn't want to be around me. Are they good companion slash lap dogs? I don't know. I love how we're talking about dogs. Come on. <laughs> yeah. There she oh, is. Oh my goodness. I want that. I want that dog. Oh you gotta get the... smoking a joint. Oh, that one's smoking. Yeah, what a cool guy. He probably lives in Vietnam. That's cute. Charlie and his favorite squeaky. Oh! <laughs> Mumble turn five. Uh, uh. Long live the queen. <laughs> Look at her little belly. <laughs> Biscuit the reindeer. Oh, God. Look at Biscuit. That's it. That's it for me. Where is the save image? You got to make it your background. <laughs> you know it, dude. <coughs> oh, so, yeah, I don't. Um, let me. Yeah. I've got another dog just real quick. She's, she's really made it. I like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, I like that one. That's my girl, Lola. This is Reindeer the dog. Reindeer the dog. Yep. Well, it's very photogenic. You know, she just, she's got it figured out. I like she it. She does have it figured out. She's kind of aggressive, though, so watch out. <laughs> nice with people, and she's nice with dogs like Bella. But somehow, if she sees you walking from a distance, she will kill you. Oh, we should do a dog breed tier list. That's what we should do. I'm a big dog guy through and through. You know, so. Yeah, I, I don't mind either. You know, there's pros and cons. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I was telling Jake, Bella's got, I think she leads the league in tackles. Um, <laughs> yeah. People walk through the door and she doesn't realize she's 110 pounds. So, right. <laughs> you know, she jumps on you. Play yeah, play, that's, play that's the thing. Sometimes they don't realize and, yeah, that that's, you know. And she's gentle as ever, but she's just so big. It's Ray Lewis of dogs. Yeah. You know? It's like, um, and sometimes when they're not trained to, uh, like early on, it's like if they're tall, if they're bigger dogs, they can reach a lot more shit that you don't want them to be reaching. <laughs> Bella started a fire in my brother's old house. He left a pizza box on top of the oven, and she jumped up to eat some pizza and turned the stove on. Oh, oh nice. He Luckily, he's a fireman. Put it out pretty quick. He's a parade guy, though. He's in Fulton Fire Department. They're in a lot of parades. Not a lot of fires. I mean, you know, the dog could have just asked for a slice of pizza. and You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. We <laughs> like crazy, though. She just helped herself when we weren't home. Shame on him for not putting it away. You know? Agreed. That's, that's, that's what I mean. It's like you kind of have to be aware of those things with big dogs versus, like, if it's a little dog, he ain't getting up there unless he makes some acrobatic shit happen, you know? Oh. <laughs> talking, Bella, Bella probably burned her paws on the burner. She's that tall. Yeah. I'm confused. Hmm. Are you still looking at dogs or what? I'm looking at the 100 smartest dogs. Or I guess actually it's 138 smartest dogs. It's a weird. It's a weird number. A weird. Apparently the Afghan hound is the least intelligent dog of all time. 
Yeah, German Shepherd Rottweiler mix because Bella's an idiot. Mm. You know, anecdotal evidence is not statistically significant in the field of science, Kyle. However, I will take your statement. I'll take it into consideration. I'll take it into consideration. I'll jot it down. Here, I'll jot it down. She's the type of dog that if my dog Lola starts barking out the front window at someone walking, Bella will be barking in the back window to ensure yeah. no one from behind. Um, so I saw something about the NBA uh, trying to play the rest of their games in like Disney or some shit. Like, yeah, I guess they work, have like a work, but yeah, I, I just don't know. I mean, are they just going to do playoff games? Like just start with playoff games? I don't know. And that's honestly, again, you know, this, you guys have seen the baseball debates of like the MLB just proposed 112 game season. The MLB PA is going to absolutely piss on that. But, but I don't have any problem with, with baseball playing. They're already pretty far apart when they play the game. But with the revenue stream, you know, they sure. offer, it's all tiered. And I saw like a, a calculator for it, essentially. And someone making, like basically the less money you make, the more percentage of your paycheck you're going to get. And they were cutting back guys that made 30 million down to like 7 mil. And guys who made sure, 7 but, but, like one. And it's like, you know, they don't want to play for that, I guess. Which sure. I but, but I think, number one, you should want to play baseball. Um, and number two... You you're just gonna get your contract back loaded a little bit further. Like you're still gonna make the money. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. think about endorsements and stuff. You're making enough. You know, like LeBron James. I read an article. This was probably two years back, so I don't know if it's changed. But he hasn't touched into his contract money. He's been living off strictly endorsements. Yeah, I did read something like that. That's crazy. That's insane, bro. Because he's making probably fifteen mil, twenty mil a year on average. Well, they they make they make all um, they they basically make their contract. Um, the same amount as their contract in endorsements, so they're basically making double. When you look at a contract that one of these like star athletes has got, they're essentially making double that, just oh, yeah. you know, from those endorsements and commercials. Like signed for twenty-seven mil or whatever he was making, he was probably pulling fifty, you know, yeah. and that's insane. And it, to not touch your contract should be easy because you're making uh twenty-five million endorsements. If you can't live off that, you're <laughs> yeah, over living somehow, you know. Yeah. If I make, well, if I make twenty five hundred in a week, you know, or bi weekly, even bi weekly, if I take home twenty five hundred, I'm like, all right, let's go to you know Lusa and let's uh, <laughs> drinks on me. And who that's knows? part of the problem is like people, you know, you you get comfortable with the income, mm -hmm. and you start spending more than you should, and I think that's that's. Uh, it's a lot of the reason that people are having problems economically when all these businesses get shut down because now they're going, oh, uh, I haven't been saving money, so I don't have any backup to um, to support this not being able to work. Yes. You know, and that twelve hundred bucks isn't enough to keep them afloat. So like, it it really opens your eyes to like how many people don't save money. And how many do actually live paycheck to paycheck on, you know, on a regular basis? Yeah. I mean, look how many pro athletes go bankrupt. It's absolutely yeah. insane. Because they get into spending like, habits. They have totally. spending habits that are way above what their actual means should be. Yep. I think what could happen a lot, too, with pro athletes, they get people, they're, like, they're naive and they get manipulated a lot. Uh, I think it was, was it the ESPN documentary, Broke? They were, they were all talking about how this one financial advisor, he was a financial advisor for like a handful of different athletes, just totally swindled all of them. And just spending money. Yeah. Well, not only that, but so these players get, they have an entourage. And so they are fueling, they're paying for a lot of these people that they're hanging around with. So their friends that come hang out with them, travel around with them and shit, they're paying for those people too. Oh, 100%. It happens a lot. It's very close. If I, uh, you know, was in that position and you look at Michael Carter Williams had a nice article come out. His mom made him put his entire signing bonus in a, like a fund that he can't touch for 20 years. And it's, you know, gaining interest, but I'm like, that's genius because now 20 years from now when he's out of the league and maybe even bankrupt, who knows if he spends the rest of his paycheck, he's going to have 5 million, 6 million sitting. <clears throat> he yeah. can reassess his financial situation 20 years from now and say, where am I at? What do I need? And how could, how do I have to spend this wisely? Because he may have already learned the hard way by then. 
That's yes, what. But, and that's the thing is, like, you if you have six million, you should be good to go for the rest of your life, even if you're living. I mean, you, you don't sixty. You don't need it. Grand. Sixty years of a hundred thousand dollars a year. That's yeah. insane. Insane. None of us will see that much money in our lives. And that's just something he's sitting on, not to mention the fact that he's been getting paid the whole time. You yeah. know? Um, the, going back, that's what Gronk did. Uh, he only The only money he ever spent was through endorsements, but he never spent lavishly. But apparently he never touched any of his uh, salary. I bet he still spends pretty lavishly, though. You know, when you have even $10 million a year in endorsements, you're not struggling. You know, it's not like we're looking at a guy who made sixty grand and was able to put away forty a year. <laughs> we're we're talking a guy who walked away with fifty million, and, and it's part of the thing that you you wonder. Like, it's part of the thing about this country, though, is that you get these people that have way more money than they're ever going to actually need. Yep. And yes, they're going to have generational wealth, which is a good thing for you know their next generation. But you also have people who are barely making enough to get by. Yep. So that contrast is absolutely insane because these people just have money sitting in their bank in a, a fucking vault that's just untouched, essentially, and goes towards their, their uh, well, it goes towards nothing. They just hang on to it, basically. Yeah. Or they end up spending it on stupid shit. It's, it's insane to me. You know, it's like... I just read an article. There was a first round pick, a first overall pick, or something like that in uh, baseball that donated. He basically, his parents had some debt. You know, they he paid off their house, their cars, their debts, and paid it all off. And that was, it ended up being, I did the math, maybe 60% of his signing bonus. But I'm like, if you're going to blow your money or run through it all, at least make it worthwhile. You know, your yeah. assets don't mean anything five years from now when you buy a car that is now it's bit the dust because you put up 200,000 miles on it, you then get rid of it. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't hold its value like that. And at the end of the day, you know, take care of your own. So I've already thought it's the pipe dream. But in the event I ever ran into a couple million, where is it going? And I want to say like, that I was going to put elsewhere. Yeah, and when somebody who just got drafted is doing something like that, you know, they have, co- they have years before they get into, like, arbitration and start making more money. Yep. So that was just you got to have that – you have to have confidence, too, in your – and the yeah. fact that you're going to keep going. And it's easy to say, you know, when we're not in that position, too. Because I talk, I'm like, yeah, say I ran into $2 million, What am I doing? I'm putting, you know, I'm buying my house. I'm paying it off. I'm paying off my car. I'm paying off my student loans. I'm paying off whatever. But at the end of the day, who knows what the hell I'm doing with it. Yeah, you know? when, it, when it's in your hand, when you have the fucking suitcase in your hand, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> full of fucking money. It's easy to say now when I know I don't have it, you know? Yeah. I still feel like it could be you, – you got to at least take care of the essentials, you know. And then from there, if you run through all your extra money, then sh- that sucks. But at least you're still set, man. If you, I mean, think about your bills, you know, make it on a much smaller scale than what they make. If someone would tell me right now, hey, we're going to give you enough money to have no mortgage and no car payment, that right there, you know, is, is saving me. It's a, it's it's a weight a, off of your shoulders, first of all. It's not. And now the income you need to break even is a lot lower. So you don't necessarily need to work longer hours or, you know, work that job you hate for the extra cash or whatever it may be. So that's, it should be a no brainer, man. But a lot of these guys as well, you know, it, it's, you see it all the time. People live, they fully allocate their income to expenses. Well, here's the thing. It's such a giant sum of money that when you pay for something, it looks like the amount of money isn't even moving. Yeah. Like you don't even recognize the amount of money you're spending. And especially when it's all on credit cards, you don't see how much you're spending. That's one thing that I don't like about credit cards is that people use their card. They're swiping their card left and right at every fucking store. And they're not physically seeing how much money they're handing over to the, to anybody. So that was one thing I liked when I didn't have a credit card was that I could be like, oh, I have this much money. Like I could, there was a tangible. I do like, that. I make unjustified purchases because I won't have to pay it for, I'll, I'll be able to sulk for a week and then I have to pay it, you know, or a month sure. or whatever. Yeah, I and it's, it it's even, it, I mean, it's so simple to do it online too. Your card information is already in there. You just go buy and then yeah. you really don't even see the money 
unless you're checking on your account all the time, you're not really paying much attention to, you know, losing it. Yep. See, I check my accounts every day, man, but it's still, you know, that you can't, people don't manage expenses that well. And when you have that kind of money, I can't imagine the stuff I would buy, you know, if I want a new bed, I'm buying a new bed. If I want a new TV, I'm buying a new TV, but that money is, it's not unlimited, you know? Yeah. I find, I was talking to Jake about this the other day. I think it was Saturday. I was telling him because we were going to stop at Burned Dairy to get beer before you save the day with that 12 pack. I was uh, sitting on it, bro. I was sitting on that 12 pack and I was like, you know what? <laughs> that was for me for the night. But then I just on my way home stopped and grabbed another one. Beautiful. Why the hell not? Yeah, I was, um, I had to check. I checked my bank account literally on my way to every store I go. Like any potential time I'm going to use my card, I have to check. Like, it's just a compulsion now to make sure that I don't spend too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's you got a, a financial advisor is a good thing to have, too, for sure. But like, it's nice to have I use um I use the nerd wallet app uh, and it'll tell you like what your bills are. It'll tell you all your upcoming bills on it. It'll give you a, it'll categorize all of your expenses, which is really nice. And it'll basically tell you like, hey you should pretty much only spend this much more money until your paycheck comes in and That's, save I, this much money. I do that as well. I like the app. So I'm actually going to try to download that app because mm -hmm. I have, I do have a financial advisor and it's a person and it's uh, but, and he helps me calculate my expenses. But the reason I feel like he does that is so I maximize my retirement, you know? So he'll say, Hey, you're, here's what your income is. Here's what your expenses are. That leaves you this. If you save half of that for yourself, the other half can go towards your retirement and life insurance. And that's how he maximizes his profit as well. Although it is beneficial to myself. Sure. But that's how my expenses are calculated. So I know my surplus. But, you know, at the same time, I do allocate half of that now towards life insurance and retirement. But that's good. Hopefully I can retire soon. And <laughs> you know, I say soon. Uh, yeah. You know, 50 or 55 is my goal as opposed to 60 or 65, but. Sure, everybody wants to do that. That would that, be nice. That's the dream, but you never, never happens. You know, very rarely, unless you get into a multi hundred thousand dollar position, you know, like I know someone from Exelon that retired at 52, but I want to say they told me their last year they made 400,000, something yeah, like that. We, we were talking about that, weren't we, yeah. the other day? Yeah, I'm like, no shit, you retired at 52, man. If you would have just saved that 400 grand for the last 10 years, you would have had enough to retire and sail off into the sunset, you know? Mm -hmm. But counter that with a retirement and anything you didn't spend out of the 400, which they probably spent a lot of it, you know, because he lived up to that, you know. You, you could look at his house and his cars and his whatever and know he made that kind of money. But yeah, either way, man, he was able to retire at 52 and he's very intelligent. So I'm sure it was a well-educated retirement. You know, he didn't do that leaving himself out to dry. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's just expenses are a real thing and it's, it's, it's a real problem for a lot of people. Myself, it's, it's, I overspend for sure. I'm lucky I have a surplus currently, but at, yeah, yeah. At, at the moment, <laughs> you money, know? money management is a tough thing. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Oh yeah. So I wanted to ask what, did you play other sports when you were growing up or did you just always play baseball? Yeah. I, uh, in high school I played football and baseball. Yeah. And so I was a captain of the football team for a year and then I was, uh, captain of the baseball team as well. Um, and I played basketball a lot too. And I actually wasn't like I played, I tried out in middle school, didn't make it. And I just completely gave up the dream at that point. But I, have gotten better over time. So I actually, yeah. if I would have tried out in high school. I may have been able to make a team, but I was like, I'm, you know, that, that ship has sailed. So I still play men's league and I played it like four leagues a year. And when I was growing up, so I, I played football, baseball, basketball, and I, uh, I played a lot of hockey with my friends, you know, we'd rent ice and all the hockey team, like Jeremy Purse and Danny Nietzsche and guys like that. And we used yeah. to rent ice all the time and I'd go and, you know, I did, uh, definitely stayed active and, but that's a big topic as well. Right. Yeah. It's like, because i always wonder like because it seems like a lot of pro athletes they played multiple sports when they were growing up they didn't just play the sport that they got big in you know and i think that that actually helps i think you're developing skills in those other sports and different skills in, in those other sports and there's a lot of athleticism to each sport but it's a different type of athleticism 
that's a, a common debate. And I, uh, I worked for a baseball academy for a long time. So I was influencing a lot of young minds. And, you know, we had we had anywhere from like seven year olds to 15 U, and then we skipped kind of 16 and 17. And then we had a college team um, for summer ball. And it's the one thing I told every parent, as I said, don't put all your eggs in one basket for one sport, you know, and we do have one kid who does. And, you know, he kind of uh, goes against the grain because he was just ranked uh, New York state's like number two prospect in all of, all of the state for his graduating mm -hmm. class, which is like 2022 or 2023, something like that. And his parents, it's, we're talking every day, like he can't escape the game, which he doesn't want to, you know, it's not forced, but his name is Bryce. Right. Oh, he was a kid I coached very, very lucky to coach hardworking throws. He's about a six, three lefty though, at about 15 years old and throws like 85, you know, it's a freak thing. And yeah, uh, crazy. And he's baseball only, but you look at guys. I mean, I can go down the list like Matt Stafford and uh, Clayton Kershaw were high school baseball teammates at a prep school. But so that means Matt Stafford, who's now an NFL quarterback was teammates on a caliber team that Clayton Kershaw, who's now an all-star pitcher, was playing for. So therefore, you know, you got to assume their skill level is pretty comparable. And multi-sport athlete, Allen Iverson, Deion Sanders. I mean, the list goes on and on. Yeah, they say they say uh, Michael Jordan was really like when he started playing baseball, when he retired and started playing baseball, they said that he was just only getting better and better because he's a good he, he's he has determinate the determination, really. And he has the abilities, like he's just naturally athletic. He's, you know. Well, it prevents he, a burnout. It prevents a burnout. It absolutely, I mean, you can work your, your main muscle groups, your main functions in any given sport, but there are other fine motor skills and other skills involved that you're not even realizing are co direct correlation or translation to the game you're playing that you're yeah. going to enhance by playing other sports, you know? So that's, I, I'm absolutely on board. You know, and like even myself, like I played football, that was mostly just to stay in shape because yeah, baseball is far from the most, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, cardio driven sport. So, right. Yeah. I play football just to lose a little weight. Like, what are you doing in these backgrounds? Bro? Who is this? Well. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, but there's an argument for it and against it, I guess you could say. You know, sometimes you you might want to just focus all your effort into one sport. And it well, makes sense. It goes both ways, too. Like, so I was – obviously, baseball is my, my go-to. And my freshman year of high school, um, playing football, one of my – he's now, to this day, one of my best friends, tackled me in a drill and pushed my knuckle right up onto, like, my wrist. So I ended up having a surgery that was severe enough that I couldn't play baseball till like, April. So mm – -hmm. you know, High school you know your season starts in march and you're done by may so i missed half my season from an injury that happened in august playing a sport that i didn't really care about that much you know i yeah. did i i'm one i'm a competitor and two i enjoy football but at the end of the day i played football to prepare myself for a baseball season and right. put, put me out for a month and a half of my my season so not to mention i didn't practice all off season so it's i say a month and a half but really put me behind six you know Right. Whereas if you were just focused on baseball, you might not have sustained that injury. Correct. Yep. <laughs> it goes multiple ways. I don't even know who this is on the screen, but. <laughs> He's just putting up different backgrounds. Um, Do you guys really not yeah. know who that is? I don't. If you said a name, I'd probably know. It's not you. It's yeah, it's got to be. That's it's got to be Jake Jones. <laughs> that's me. That's me like a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I can have a high school friend on his phone. That's got to be that couple weeks ago. <laughs> Could you imagine? That here's, was me, here's me at uh, elementary school graduation. That was I, just, I, I, I just found my MySpace page. It's me and Dylan Kimball. Is this what you do when we're... Oh, my God. My God. Yeah. I, I kind of zoned. I zoned out. I was texting. Nope. Hang on. He zoned out and he caller, was like you are my on space. the air. You are on the air, caller. How are you right now? I, 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 I'm on the air. You're on the air. Where, where, 
said I'd be on the air before. How are you right now? I am uh, wonderful. All right, yeah, we're baby. doing a podcast right now. Can I call you back later? Fuck that podcast. Who is it? <laughs> it's fucking, it's fucking Vinny. <laughs> Did it not show up? I saw the V. That's it. What a fucking. Show. I saw the I saw the any, and we put it back. We put it together. Portland mm. any. <laughs> Couldn't tell. He saw the any. He didn't know. Could have been Cortland. Could have been Vinny. But yeah, I think um. Going back to this whole thing, it's like I think I think some of these sports need to start playing, and I think like there's ways to do it. The UFC's already been doing it, you know. They've figured out ways to do it, and and you know, and I've read a lot of things about WWE having uh, financial tr- financial troubles because they're not making gate money. Yeah, they're, they're doing their events. Yeah, they're making you know money off of their uh, their their TV broadcast, and. You know, they're, but they're just not getting attendance, so they don't make that money. And so, yeah, these sports are going to be able to do that. They'll make money off of their broadcasts with their deals with Fox and, or, you know, NBC and all that shit. But they're not going to be making – the stadiums aren't going to be making the money. It's going to be impossible, man, and to generate revenue. I mean, I thought about, you know, maybe you do TV subscriptions. You're not going to live stream the Yankees on Yes. But honestly, the Yes is a huge revenue builder for those guys on top of in-person sales. So it's, you know, when it comes to player cuts, it's automatic. It has to, because they're, think about it. The Yankees, I looked it up. They average maybe $116 per ticket for a home game. And that's not counting resale on StubHub. We're talking just if you go on yankees.com and buy times, say they seat 30,000. I mean, think about that. You know, that's, they're making $4 million a game times 81 home games. It's absolutely insane. The math yeah. on that, like about thir- about three hundred and fifty million, they're making off home game ticket sales, and you're losing all that revenue. Yeah, and there's no way to replicate that revenue. Like it wouldn't be able to come from somewhere. Well, even if you make a a subscription to watch the games, Yes Network's probably paying you as much as someone's going to pay to watch the Yankee season online. You know, because what it, you, no one's paying thousands to watch you for a season you know right you're gonna get all these live streams that people stream you know someone buys it and then they charge a subscription for less to pay their subscription and it's gonna be legal and they're gonna do it anyways and it's you know there's there's just absolutely no way to make that kind of money the in-person and we're forgetting completely about vendors about you know different merchandise it's there it's your revenue is cut even if Everything goes to perfection. Your revenue is cut by 75%. Right. Guaranteed. It's like there's got to be a way to do this, though. I mean, because the, the only other thing you can think of is is trying to let people in and just do every other seat. And it's like you're still not going to be making the money that you would be making. So, you, I mean, you'd be making maybe half of your revenue. There's no point in going every other seat because once you get back in the tunnel and you leave your seat to go buy a beer – you're right back touching dicks with somebody. Yeah, you know, it's like it's impossible, man. It's never gonna, it's never gonna be successful like that, you know. So mm-hmm. either a, I think you open up the floodgates and you just let it go, or b, you just can't make it work. And it depends on the state. Some states would say let it ride, and some states would, you know, Como would say, I don't want anyone within six feet of the stadium. And it, yeah, it's I know, you know that that's the problem is that it's 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 up to the states. So and you you know. <sighs> Because of that, you can't do these leagues. They're not all going to agree. They're just not all going to agree. So you can't go. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, if it was up to me, well, if... I mean, I want to. I want to see live sports. I just want to see live sports. So <laughs> if it was up to me, I'm going. These guys, if they want to take the risk and go to the fucking stadium, they're going to the stadium. I agree with that. Even when it comes to the COVID topic, man, it's. It's up to your own, you know, it's at your own risk. It's just like anything in this world, you know. <laughs> you yeah. drink alcohol at your own risk. You drive a car at your own risk. You do whatever. Yeah, you, you can't just stay inside and be scared. Correct. You know? People do, you know. We've all seen the SpongeBob episode where it's Chip Penny and use napkin. And SpongeBob well, there's, 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 just, there's consequences but, for everything. And I think yeah. uh, what people are scared of is um, they don't <laughs> – no, nobody – wants to be the first like no 
sports league wants to be like the first one to open up right because they want someone else to open up first make a mistake and then take the hit yeah when covid doubles and it's because the yankees are packing a thirty thousand house they want the yankees to wear the burden as opposed to hey we opened up sports nationally and here's the outcome and yeah, well, some of these states are being the, the guinea pigs. You know, they're opening up, so. Well, here's the thing, too, with just about anything, man, and it's it's really, that's why I say either it's an all-or-nothing approach nationally, is softball. So I'm a big softball guy now that I'm no, no longer the great baseball player anymore. And yeah. we, New York is shut down, so there's no softball at, anywhere. There's one I actually played the other day, but it was in a, a wooded area in Sandy Creek, and you can't see it from the road kind of thing. And, um, but otherwise there's no soft. So funny that like, uh, you're doing like basic, like illegal softball games. <laughs> 100%. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not illegal, but it's, uh, you just want to get out and play and it's good for everybody to get out and softball. I mean, there's no dugouts or anything, but we're not really that close to each other. And yeah, it's just weird to think that like, you have to almost secretly play softball nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Like that's such yeah. a weird concept. I get arrested for playing slow pitch. Could you imagine? Yeah, like, <laughs> who would have ever thought that? You're half in the bag on a softball field with a ball coming at you at half a mile an hour. I get taken out. I didn't do you shit. Have, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah, have to have true. ghost men on the bases because you can't be. You, you can't <laughs> no, be it'd be sick because they'll, they'll shoot the tear gas at you and you just lob it back to them. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. the ultimate pro gamer move right there. And. <laughs> But the thing is, is like <laughs> my team, my team that I play with, I play on a tournament team. It's a, you know, it's the most competitive softball you're going to find. And it's big money. You know, teams walk away with 2000 bucks if they win the tournament kind of thing, which like I say big, player does. Uh, team. No, it's like 200 a pop or so. Oh, that's a week that's for a weekend. Decent. 200 bucks to play some slow pitch, man. It's not a bad life. But oh, you, uh, my like the well, team I with just just went to PA this weekend and played in a tournament of like thirty teams and there was no social distancing going on and like Ohio's open and my team's going to Ohio next weekend I haven't gone to any of them because it's a lot of travel and whatever but I was thinking about starting another another softball team because I haven't played in I don't know, four years maybe maybe four years and I've been wanting to play but it's like you gotta up here you gotta get a whole team together first of all you have to find people that are gonna consistently play and then you also have to have a sponsor uh to sponsor the team yeah it's it's i want to say like even fulton with no sponsor is maybe 450 plus it's about 600 dollars for a season which you can split that and you know you want at least 12 people because you don't know you're going to get people showing up but say all everyone shows up at all times it's going to be at least 60 a pop with a 10-man team and that's right and then you're also paying i think you have to play a ump you got to pay an ump fee too every week yeah it's, it's 60 a person times 10 Plus, you're going to be paying. It ends up being six bucks a pop every game if you have a ten. Yeah, game. yeah. I think it was like seven or six or seven. Yeah. So you're paying. It ends up being say six hundred for your team, and then what's six times? I mean, well, sixty bucks times ten games a year. So you're you're talking. It's almost a thirteen hundred dollar expense amongst ten people. That's why you got to have a sponsor theoretically, and you would just wear their, you know, just wear their logo on your shirt. The three bucks, the three bucks or six bucks, it's three a game, six a night, is not really the end of the world when it's broken up like that. You know, once a week you're spending six dollars, but it does add up. And when you're fronting sixty, like I got lucky, we have a sponsor. It's Chubby's and Fulton. They're awesome. All they ask is come to our bar. You know, a couple people a week, and then maybe one night a season, have your whole team come in, and we get drunk, we eat some food, and I go there. You know, Chubby's every time I play in Fulton, I'll stop in at least for a beer. Or, you know, at least dinner or something of the sort. Typically, yeah, that's a win-win, though. That's a win-win situation. Well, he's profiting off our team going in there. And it only cost him maybe 500 but it's 500 in capital that he had to front. Where yeah. we, you know, it saves us the, the short-term financial hurt. And over time, we're going to give him that 500 back and more. Right, because it's free advertisement. You guys are walking billboards. Yes, 100%. Sponsorship should be a no-brainer for a lot of businesses that can provide. You know, a lot of people. You know, I I don't expect a pharmacy to sponsor us because we're never going to give it back to you. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I'm not going to go buy. I can buy a pack of gum at Wayne's, but I if I don't need a prescription, I can't buy anything at Wayne's. You know, other than the, right. the typical little things. We're not going to be able to give you back your 500. But a place like a bar, or restaurant, 
should be automatic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, after the game, a lot of times you probably would just go to the bar anyway. So it's like. One hundred percent. Yeah, like already... I said, they're awesome, man. You know, Nick Dusky. He owns Duskies in Phoenix as well. But it's hey, Nick, can you sponsor us? Sure, how much you need? Just make sure you know. And here's the expectation. And he honestly, he'll. He it's not like he'll hound you for it until he realizes you haven't been there yet. And then he just won't sponsor you again. But, right. you know, a lot of our guys that he sponsors are consistent, same people every time, you know, my teams are usually pretty similar and same with the other team. He sponsors usually, if there's a five team league, he sponsors three of the teams kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. I, I find that a lot of the times the sponsors are bars and, and oh, it makes yeah. the most sense. It makes, yeah. it does make the most sense sports bars, you know, but it always gets paid for, you know, it's, if you're if you're any sort of decent person, you know this business is helping you out tremendously. So just scratch your back if they scratch yours. But people do abuse it. You know, you'll see it all the time. Yeah, and there's nothing better than playing slow pitch baseball with dudes that are like, you know, a hundred pounds overweight and they're smoking cigarettes all the time and shit. It's just great, dude. It's so much fun though, man. It's that's it depends on the league though. We've all had the people who ruin it. You know, it's just like anything in yeah. this. You have a great time at a concert until some asshole does something stupid, or you have a great time at a softball game until some asshole does something stupid, you know? But yeah, it's well, it's really- always fun watching the guy who always just tries to smoke the just always tries to hit a dinger every single time. But yeah. he'll what he'll do is if it doesn't go over the fence, it'll hit the fence and come back, and just the outfielder throw him out at first because he's so fucking yeah. slow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love slow pitch, man. Now that's what yeah, you feel like you, you, you can always hit the ball, you know? Oh, yeah. Give me two seconds. One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. <laughs> He's out of seconds. <clears throat> yeah. No, I, I don't know. I did think about starting another team. It would be cool. I'm, I apologize. I'm, like, completely checked out. I should not have had that cup of coffee <laughs> when we started. I am, like, zooming right now, especially drinking – malt liquor like i am completely not focused at all you're like on myspace and shit yeah yeah and i'm playing nhl (laughs) (laughs) and i'm texting well i was gonna wrap it up anyway we're two hours in soon so or i was gonna wrap it up i gotta take a a shower and take a shit and go to bed i have to get up at fucking five (laughs) oh that's cool uh, 9 30 Mm. good well, uh, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> we'll wrap it up when he comes back, I guess. <clears throat> but like I said, I want to see, I just want to see live sports, dude. Like, I'm fucking sick Same. of it. Um, you know what we didn't talk about yet? Uh, John Jones quit the UFC. Yeah, he also took spray cans from those kids, those protesters. You see that? That was pretty sick, though. That was pretty fucking sick of him. That was a pretty cool move. That was a pro gamer move by John Jones. He, he's like, I'm John Jones. Give me those. Yeah. That's all he had to say. But, I mean, what else does Jones have to to gain, I guess? And you think, you know, I got to think he's going to come back when the fight is right. You know what I mean? Because that's what a lot of guys who retired do. Yeah, especially when they retire, at, you know, at the age he is, I I can't so we, imagine that if they don't give him the if they give him the right fight, he's not going to come back. I I can't I don't know if I buy that. Where's the John Jones post that I read? Here it is. They were talking about how crazy his resume is, because it is probably the most insane resume, probably besides Fedor. Right. Uh, I got to see if I can find him. I think it's this top comment here. Oh, here it is right here. Um, People in the other thread talking like Jones doesn't have one of the best, if not the best resume of all time. He probably has the best names on his record with maybe Fedor or St. Pierre matching him. Shogun, Ryan Bader. Who's Shad? I can't think of Shad off the top of my head. Um, Shad Moss. Shad. A.K.A. Uh, Lil Bow Wow. Wait, is Shad Moss Lil Bow Wow? John Jones. Who the fuck is Shad? Oh, it's Bow Wow. Yeah, just Bow Wow. It's not Lil Bow Wow. That's Shad. What? No, it's... Yeah, Shad Moss. No, he didn't 
Dude, John Jones would murder Lil Bow Wow, first off. Well, he's not Lil anymore. He's just Bow Wow. I think he's still little compared to John Jones. Most humans are small. Mm. Okay, well, John Jones. He's five. He's five seven. John Jones confiscated some uh, vandalism. Yeah, yeah. yeah the oh, pink fucking pink. Shad, not Shad. It's fucking Rashad Evans. Jesus, I'm retarded. So, oh, and he beat Rash- all these Rashad. guys in prime. He beat fucking Shogun. He beat Ryan Bader. He put Rashad Evans, Rampage Jackson, Leota Machida. He beat Gustafson twice. Glover Teixeira, fucking T. Uh, <laughs> the guy, the guy wrote. <laughs> that's actually fucking hilarious. The guy wrote, um, uh, T. Oh my God, what the fuck? T R T E R. Who the fuck is he? Vitor, not. <laughs> but he spelled. Oh, T R T Tor. Yeah, T R T Tor. And he beat DC twice. You could say not objective like technically he didn't but um is saint, what is saint pierre's resume like saint pierre's is crazy i um, i literally <laughs> look at look at what i fucking typed in this is what i typed in to look up gsp's fucking fight history this is what i typed in in google get ready for this saint pierre's <laughs> saint pierre's is it a <laughs> it's a shoe company I don't know. I think I think Saint Pierre, considering he he um, avenged all of his lo- like both of his losses, he avenged. I mean, right. look at this shit, dude. Look at all he the com- green. Yeah, he comes back. That Bisping fight was crazy because Bisping didn't even tap. He just literally choked him out. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's up oh well, yeah oh um, yeah we're gonna wrap up in a bit kyle i gotta head to bed soon that's fine brother i uh we play call of duty every night and my friends texted me a little while ago and said our liberties are in jeopardy <laughs> word <laughs> quoting tony Ke- or uh Toby Keith, but when you typed in St. Pierre's, it reminded me, Clark, Kyle Clark sent over American Soldier, and he was looking up Toby Keith tour dates, and he typed in Tony Keith, so that's been who we're rolling with ever since. I like it. Tony okay. Keith, Liberty's in Jeopardy. But, uh, yeah, man. Yeah. You know? I'll All be right. happy to have you on again. We definitely want to have you on in the actual studio once quarantine lifts. Because this is unorthodox. I cannot, like, when you left, I was telling Seth, I cannot focus when we do it over Skype. I have my phone here. I'm on my, I'm literally on my computer. And I also have my Xbox. I got and my he's playing. Uh, yeah, he's playing, like, Crash Team Racing or some bullshit. My, my, and, like, dick, I don't, my dick has been out this whole time, and I'm just kind of yeah. batting it around. <laughs> like, like, you could not work <laughs> from home, dude. There's no way. I do. It's fucking terrible. Absolutely. How horrible. often, when you work from home, how often do you have pants on? Like, do you have your your pants on the whole time? Uh, so what you're looking at is kind of my typical attire, man. I've got <laughs> what if you just some nice sandals, just, some shorts, like, and just... like this, and I'll typically have a dip in. Um, I don't drink during working hours, but there's a good chance I'm going on four hours sleep. And yeah, <laughs> that's about it, man. It's, I mean. It really is a, uh, and it sucks with my job. I'm on like talking to customers all day. So there's a good chance I'm on the phone all day long. So, and, or zoom calls, like I do zoom calls a lot and I probably look like shit and sound like shit and feel like shit. And yeah. Yeah. You know what it reminds me of is, um, <clears throat> that old, uh, this is sports center commercial with John Clayton, this one. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. That's funny. What does he say? He's like, "Mom." What does he yell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even remember. That's a I gotta, I gotta watch it's it. So out. good. Did he retired? That was a classic. Uh, I don't remember. I he might have died actually. I don't even watch Sports Center anymore, bro. I couldn't tell you who's on it. The, I gave up all hope when Tula. No, was- he's still he's still around, huh? 
We talked about Troy Tulowitzki earlier. He got traded to the Blue Jays. And in his first game, he went like four for four with like two doubles, a homer, a single on a Tuesday night when it was raining and less than 65 degrees from getting traded to the NL to the AL. And when I heard on ESPN that that was the first time anyone's done that, I said, I'm done here. That is not yeah. You refine the search so much, <laughs> you're bound to have him be the only one. Yeah, no kidding. Four for four with nine total bases on a Tuesday when it was raining with a slight drizzle, less than 65 degrees. No shit. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. At that point in time, I said, I'll never watch ESPN again. And then when they said the first time in 60 years or something this year in the NFL, that three rookie coaches were four and oh to start the season. And I was like, well, I I mean, they also had a whole bunch of stuff like about Aaron Rodgers and and LaFleur and how they weren't going to get along and all that shit. That never, that wasn't real. It's like it's sensationalism, just like with any any news network. You know, they're trying to get views. They're trying to, you know, make the story something that you latch onto. It's, you know, I guess that's kind of the nature of their business. They've gotten even worse during quarantine. They just released sure. the other day that Roy Holiday had drugs in his system when his helicopter crashed or plane crashed. And I'm like, listen, Roy Holiday died in like 2017. You know, you guys are three and a half years late here. You're not just well, getting it's like. Autopsy. They don't have anything else to report on, so they're just kind of making shit up now, you know? It's yeah. insane. You know, that's media at its finest, but sports centers really, back in the day, they used to give some cool stats and a lot of highlights. And even, you know, but even when sports were still going on, it's just, it's not even entertaining anymore. I like watching the highlights still. Like, I'll turn tune in. But once I, I the, like, when it comes to the talk shows and stuff, man, or even just the commentary, I, turn, I, would, I could watch it on mute. I want to see the scores. I want to see who did well. You know, I want to follow the live stats. Yeah. I, do, I, do I like not. watching like the top 10 or something, you know. I think uh, personally, Sports Center died when Stuart Scott did. Oh, yeah. I agree. Basically, yeah. That's a bit, was, around the same time. He was time. legitimately, he was the Mike Trout of ESPN. Like, he was that much better than everyone else on that network. Not to mention the content has become so refined as well in the sense of it's LeBron every other topic. Or, right, yeah. You know, or whatever it may be. And I'm like, listen, sometimes I like to hear about the cool high school player who hit a full court shot to win his game. Like, yeah, I want to hear those like fringe stories. That's what I want to hear. That was the best, actually. Yeah. When it was like, um, especially uh, like the Little League World Series, I feel like they don't even like they don't even cover it anymore. Yep. Barely get streamed anymore. Like, um, uh, who was the fucking who was the the little black girl that was the pitcher what the fuck was her name i met monet monet davis, davis? i'll show you a picture yeah, that was like the last time they talked about the like i guess it's because the little league world series broke the gender barrier and the color barrier so they were like eh, eh, that's it you have done it yeah <laughs> that was that was probably the worst this was the worst possible time to make that joke but like <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Oh no, shit! Yeah, she How threw out one, she of my, one of my games. She threw out the first pitch. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, they were on a. They were doing a civil rights movement. They're called the Anderson Monarchs. I did. I think she was like twenty-five. She's way younger than I am. I thought she was older than me. That was shortly after her uh, Little League World Series thing. <laughs> like, I want to say the following summer. And uh, yeah, she threw out the first pitch. We played in Oneonta, and they have the Hall of Fame right down the street. So. You know, they thought yeah. it was a good place to stop. And they were a civil rights movement team, so they would, you know, talk about kind of the social injustice in that aspect. And, you know, and it was an all-black all, all black team. And we actually, we got along great with them. We had our guys racing some of their fastest guys, and Monet, you know, was hitting balls with us and whatever. So I got to meet her, and it was cool. I still have the bracelet on. It's since bled out. It was a white bracelet with blue writing that says, we're on board Anderson Monarch's uh, civil rights movement. And yeah. now it's all just an all blue bracelet, but yeah, yeah, that'll happen. But it's been four years or five years, so but I still got it on. Well, it's a good way to wrap this up because uh, we want to go out with uh, eight minutes and 46 seconds of uh, just nothing, you know. You can choose it to, you know, choose to use it as a moment of silence or whatever, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, we we're it was fun having you on, man. And like Thanks. like Jake said, we'll have you in when you know as soon as that's we get the clear, we get the go yeah. go ahead, you know. Unless unless one of us dies. Or, well, we let's might not, still do it. Let's not wish it, but yeah, anytime you guys want me on, man. I mean, I enjoyed it, and 
I'm always just chilling, <laughs> drinking beer. Yeah, so. maybe, maybe we'll do like if one of us dies, we'll do like a weekend at Bernie's thing, and we'll like prop the get the arms on like strings and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll talk to everybody next week. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And uh, that's it. See you guys. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs>